Welcome to the Coffee and Banana Podcast, where we speak to entrepreneurs, thought leaders, executives, artists, and other cool people while grabbing a cup of coffee. In today's episode, we have the pleasure of speaking with Afghan-Canadian MMA fighter Ali Bumaye Wasuk. Ali speaks on his love for anime, the dedication and training and diet that is necessary for fighters, and his journey of fighting for over 10 years. Ali also speaks on his identity as an Afghan-Canadian fighter. All that and more in today's episode of Coffee and Banana. Like, who created this to make yeah. it that accurate, right? So, uh, here, here's something that, um, do you know, you read uh, these days. Yeah. I actually didn't know you uh, you read, but after speaking to you, I'm yeah. like, this guy has some books in him. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just come in with spirituality. No yeah. one just randomly brings up spirituality for nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know Malcolm Gladwell? No, I don't. So he just uh, he's he was a journalist for the New York Times, and then he yeah. went into just writing about. He made a book called Blink, which yeah. he talked about. Um, you have to work so hard that things are so fast to the point that you're blinking. Mm. So he talked. He went into like Michael Jordan and find out that they train differently than other people. Uh. So, bro, you would love this book. Yeah, you should I'll, definitely look into should, it. Yeah. Sometimes because like there was a period where I was traveling a lot. Yeah. Uh, for work, and then I didn't have time to pick a book, so I would get the audio books. So I would just run through it yeah. real quick. And like, I'm the type of person that I like audiobooks. I don't know how you feel yeah, about yeah. them. So yeah, are I you into that? Yeah, yeah. I, I do like audiobooks. The thing with me is like, I retain more information when I read it. Okay. Dope. Right? Like, because I feel like sometimes like, I, I drift in my thoughts a lot. Like, especially when I'm driving or like when yeah. I'm just walking around or whatever. Like, just have my headphones in. I like drift in my own mind mm -hmm. a lot. So for that reason, like, I feel like. Even though the book takes me, a book takes me a lot longer than what a normal person would probably read a book in. But well, you like are busy with other training shit too, and stuff, right? Yeah, so. yeah. So, but the the cool thing of that is like I can like reread the same page four times or five times if I need to, right? Sure, definitely. Right? So like you retain it more when you see the text. When so that's I see the, your, yeah, okay, nice. and I can kind of repeat it and like try to understand it a little bit better and Dope. like how they're trying to like send the message out right so, nice nice. yeah i feel like with audiobooks i'm constantly like rewinding, rewinding. oh i see i, I like see. think about like my fight and then i'm like oh wait what did he say i'm listening yeah. to an audio oh, okay. you know what i mean yeah. i see i see yeah well my mind's blank yeah, yeah <laughs> i'm cool. just thinking of nothing yeah <laughs> the other uh, book fills it but it was just at, the, at that point like i have actual physical physical books and it's sick i like looking at the text and uh going through it it's yeah. just i was i was at a period where I didn't have the time to actually read a book, mm. so then audiobooks, and then I realized how I um, how much I liked it. Yeah. Um, and what I do is I speed it up a little bit. Now it sounds like Eminem is, is telling me the book, <laughs> That's so, so I'm cool. way more interested, and yeah. I'm like, there's a beat kind of in my head. That's so <laughs> that I'm cool. I'm thinking while well, the guys are like, it seems like, uh, and they're talking with this kind of pace, but now I, all of a sudden they were drinking coffee, and yeah. Ali is thinking that, hmm, frightened. Yeah. Uh, the accent, the tones, that it just really plays really well. That's cool, and that's how you learn, I guess, right? I didn't know, but yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, at that yeah. moment. But yeah. the reason I brought that up, Malcolm Gladwell, yeah. um, he, he wrote a book called um, Outliers. Yeah. So Outliers, like how does, why do greatness, why does it happen to greatness? Like mm. why do some people better than other people? Mm. And they looked at it at first like, they're born this way. That's what it is. It's like raw. But they were like, no, it's wrong. You're not born this way. It's who can utilize the best things around them. So mm. they found out like, for example, Bill Gates. Yeah. They're like, why is he the guy who's um, like taking, like brought computers to what it is today, my what? personal computer, right? Yeah. Not only was it, he was passionate about it, that he was coding more than going to school. Like mm. that's what he cared so much for. About, yeah. But he was at a school that they had a computer that he could code. Mm. You know what I mean? He saw the opportunity wow. and went in. went in. Most others, if he was born anywhere else, yeah. he would like most he back then, you wouldn't have that opportunity. Interesting. So they looked at that. And then afterwards, they looked at NHL players. They mm. looked at um, NBA players and the soccer players. Guess what they found? They found a consistency with a lot of them. Wow. And uh, one of the main consistencies Consistency is that a lot of them are born in the earlier months of the year rather than the later months. months. Interesting. And the reason is because think about this. If me and you look at this, you're born in July, yeah. right? I'm born in November. Yeah. We're considered the same age to this like to the government, to everything. Well, yeah. It's like whatever. Yeah. But you have at least five months ahead of me. Like you have five months more brain development than mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. So we think, oh, it's whatever. But as a kid, it matters a lot mm -hmm. because now you have that bigger advantage going over. And they looked at the data. The, the people in the earlier months, they tend to go to sports because mm -hmm. they're bigger, they're built better, mm -hmm. and they're going to obviously dominate the younger kids. While the people that are in the later months, like the November, they go into arts ah. because they realize they can't compete with sports. I mean, obviously there's outliers on yeah. both sides, exceptions yeah, yeah. and shit, yeah. but like most of the time, it's, that's the case. Mm. So 
to come back to the whole astrology thing. Yeah. If somebody was thinking at that grand scale, they're like, well, if someone was born on this side, based on those cir- social circumstances and that brain development or physical development at that mm. time, then maybe they have a certain perspective that's shared with the people born in that month. And let's now tell them what that perspective is. Holy. So in that way, My I believe astrology yeah. because of the nuance through Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. This could all just be pseudoscience. Yeah, Who yeah. knows? Who like knows? it's all bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like, if it res- if it connects with you in some way, that's really cool. You know, that's yeah, what. Does, man. Uh, that's why I'm like, okay, that's kind of dope. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's so cool, man. That's a really good perspective. Like, and it makes sense, right? Because how else would it? How else would you like know everything? Like, you true. Know? I mean, like, but then they say like, you know, people can just look at the fucking stars, stars and, and like, then like, oh. like hold, hold on a second, <laughs> wait, yo, don't go outside today. It's bad yeah. luck. Yeah, that's so funny, bro. Like, um, uh, what do you take in your coffee? Just like, uh, do you drink coffee often? I do, man. I'm a huge coffee. Okay, let's yeah, let's have yeah, some yeah. fucking coffee, man. Yeah, cheers, cheers to you. Bro. Thank nice. you, brother. Uh, actually, I'm gonna get some more coffee. Uh, yeah, sir, can I get some more coffee, please? Thank you. Bro, uh, I I know you're uh, you're probably on a diet, but could you have one of these? Oh, absolutely, man. Okay, yeah, sick. Yeah, let's go, let's yeah. go in. Let's gonna, go in, eh? Yeah. So this was made by my wife. I'm married no way. now. I know. I saw oh. actually uh, on your story today. Yeah. And uh, well, throughout the last few months and mm-hmm. stuff. So yeah, congratulations, oh, bro. Thank you. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. You guys been together for a while before marriage, or? Um, like we were friends first. Yeah, yeah. And then um. It evolved into that. We weren't... No, bro. Not compared to you guys. No, eh? Yeah. Like, me and Rana were friends first, too. Oh, sick. Close friends. I, like, I was dating her... One of her best friends at the time. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh. Yeah. She low-key pulled a snake move on that <laughs> yeah. girl, <though>. Low-key, right? <laughs> and Hilarious. she's always, like, liked me. And, like, her best friend was kind of crazy. And then, like, me and her became really close friends. And, yeah. But anyways, you were saying... I was saying, like... Um... The main thing I wanted to say was like we got married through the pandemic, but Crazy. we got engaged and married the same year. Wow! Like we were obviously we liked each other, and like you know, when you know, you're like you Yo, know, let's, yeah. let's go in, yeah, yeah. And then um, when we got engaged, the families met, all that. It was positive, but then um, she's from the states, so if we want to be together, mm. we couldn't. The only way we could be together is if married. we're family. Yeah. So we we look at each other. We're like. Like a marriage is just a status. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't change what we have. Yeah. Like I still see her as my girlfriend, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. And um, I'm like, yeah, let's do it, because now and now we're together. Like we live together now. She's she's able to come to Canada. Yeah. You know, I'm able to go to the states. Interesting. You know. So. Yeah. Benefit. And it's like this rule of thumb of like you got to be engaged for like certain months yeah. before you get married. It's like because Rana said the same thing. She's like, okay, well, I want to be engaged for a year. I'm like. What if we're engaged for like mm-hmm. two months? What if we're engaged for like three months? Like, True. there's no rule of thumb. We've been dating for ten years. Exactly. Like, you know We've I mean? been engaged at this line. Like, yeah. You're just like it's just like, but it's more for the girls, you know. It's more for the girls. Yeah. They, they kind of, bro. It's it's like, I'll tell you this. You know, you're fighting all the time, and you have like so much attention. Everybody's looking at you at the same time. Mm-hmm. I think the most the the equivalence of that is a marriage for mm. a woman because mm. everyone's focused like no one's care for the guy it's like guy getting married cool sure yeah, yeah. but they're more like let's look at the bride let's see her dress oh she looks beautiful mm. you know the yeah. guy's just kind of like the side piece you know it's like oh yeah we did it yeah you know yeah. no guy's like yo bro as a young kid i can't wait till i'm married man some people are <laughs> yeah. some, some people, people are. yeah there's that exception right most guys are like but most I guys guess, i don't think so career oriented like or, yeah super yeah. career oriented right so yeah Let's take a quick break and hear a word from our sponsors, G2 Athletics. Hey, everyone. This is Coach Gibbs from G2 Athletics, located in Vancouver, B.C. As a former professional and NCAA athlete, I have over 10 years of professional experience in the game of basketball, which has also allowed me to train youth athletics worldwide, as well as training NBA players and assisting with NBA workouts with athletes such as Metal World Peace, DeMar DeRozan, Kelly Oubre, Jason Tatum, and more. For a limited time, Coffee and Banana listeners will receive an additional 15% discount on our seasonal training academy and basketball products with promo code COFFEE15. That's C-O-F-F-E-E-1-5 with no spaces, all caps. Visit g2athletics.com and receive an additional 15% discount on all training sessions and basketball products. That's 
g2athletics.com with promo code COFFEE15. Go now, become a part of the G2 family, and improve your game. Thanks, Gibbs. And now we're back to Coffee and Banana. Fuck, man. I want to fight like Goku. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you? That's yeah. my shit, bro. That's my <laughs> mine, shit. Was, mine was Team Gohan. Yeah, hey? Team Gohan. Uh, so you, who is your favorite Dragon Ball Z character? Um, Like, right now, in this time of my life, I would say Goku. Okay. But before, it was Vegeta. Okay. And, I fuck with Vegeta. Yeah. He's hard. And for me, it had to do with a lot of like, I'm a, I'm a person that likes to please people. Mm-hmm. I'm a person that likes to like help people. Yeah. Um, so I've always had that Goku kind of trait, like always like that kind of um, mentality. Whereas like something that drove me to Vegeta was like his just anger and his mm-hmm. like his fearlessness. And like he's yeah. just like thinks he's the best and just yeah. so confident, right? And when you look at it, he's actually like not won that many like battles. Yeah. Right? He's always getting like effed up, right? So. Yeah. But yeah, it was just more gravitated towards Vegeta for that yeah. reason. Bro, yeah. he keeps coming back at you. That's yeah. the thing with Vegeta. You Never gives up, right? Bro, like he there's periods like where I think he fought until he died and then mm. he got the halo and then he yeah, came back, back and fought somebody else. Yeah. Like, yeah, Vegeta was probably the most badass character yeah. in Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Uh Goku was just like he's like the goat. You yeah, know, like, like you're like guy. he's the guy yeah. that the show is built around. Around, yeah, yeah. You know, so we get it. But yeah, Vegeta, bro. Yeah. Um, one of the things like when I was a kid that got me into hip hop is I would download a Dragon ball z mixes mm. and one of them was like uh a vegeta mix and like vegeta's fights and shit mm. and then back then it had lincoln park did you listen to the oh, lincoln park yeah, back yeah, in the yeah, day yeah, i did yeah and like that shit was like the background music to yeah. any fight and like yeah bro you want to fuck someone up after yeah, watching those yeah. shit. <laughs> that's so cool yeah i just actually watched one uh i don't know if you know the artist named conquer i think they're or the song is called conquer i think the artists are called swid they're like Polynesian. I don't know them. Okay, you gotta, Bro, you gotta put to me it. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, they did this uh, remix of like when Go- Goku fought Jiren. Uh, that's the movie. You're talking about. Yeah, like he, he, I think it was in the movie or it was in the like was it Super? Dragon Ball Super, right? Okay. Yeah. I don't. I haven't seen Super. Yeah. So. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Tell but me about anyways, it. Anyways, yeah, it was super cool. Like the way they exactly what you said they like remix that song into like goku's battle fire with like oh it's just so fire bro dope it gets dope. me pumped like oh, it actually okay. got me pumped for this fight like this is my most recent fight so oh, nice man yeah. that's sick that's sick yeah. it, uh talk about your most recent fight do you like listen to like blast hip-hop or some shit before going into a fight what's your yeah. what's that process while you're like waiting uh, till it starts well for me bro i'm big into music like it, yeah. if if in the back room like when i'm warming up like mm-hmm. I don't care about anybody else that's like kind of like some people like to meditate some people like quiet some people like you know and like you're sharing a back room with like three or four people right mm-hmm. like fighters that are fighting like either before you or after you true so for me like i'm just like bring my like dre pill bot thing and i like yeah, yeah. blast my music like just old school like hip-hop like tupac fire ludicrous mm-hmm. you know like anything that like just brings me do back. you mean welcome to america ludicrous do you know that song welcome to america by ludicrous uh, i'm more into like growing pains Have you remember that song that album or the, the it's a song called growing know, pains yeah, yeah that that song i don't know what it is but it just brings me back into my childhood and it like my childhood is when i was really into like you know dragon ball z and yeah. like always wanting to like wrestle with my brother and Mm-hmm. it just brings me back into like that and like it just i don't know it just kind of gets me like my mind at like ease like everything's gonna be all right you know what i gotcha. mean like it just like that kind of like certain melodies that's why i'm so big into music like music just helps me get to where i need to get to like whether that's like i need to get pumped like yeah. fire inside me or i need to like relax mm-hmm. i just feel like music is like a big tool that i use dope yeah dope. super cool man like mm-hmm. music's beautiful which is crazy. Yeah. You said, because you're a fighter and yeah. you like music. Yeah. Two things that Afghans are like, that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is weird, huh? Yeah. That's, that's, but um, how do you feel about, because I don't know too many Afghans yeah. that are in this industry mm. at all. Yeah. And then, let alone like having support, mm. you know, into this. Was there any like challenges initially that you like want to speak on as far as like being Afghan? And then you're like, by the way, I'm going to get into fighting. Yeah. And then family members are like, what the hell? Yeah, like for the longest time in my amateur career, like I was like super low key. And then like kind of like when my fight was like two weeks away, I'm like, oh yeah, like by the way, mom, I'm going to fight. Like, you know, yeah. And like (laughs) there was so much, like every time I fought and I won, um, like there wouldn't even be like, my mom would be super happy, super stoked. She would never watch my fights. Yeah. Just because I feel like she gets too emotional, like, you know, but then my uncle watches and he would always be like, hey, like, you know, I think it's time to put, stop fighting. Like, yeah, like, and for me, like something like that is just like, 
so like it hits home for me like it hits me like right in the heart because mm-hmm. like it's like you go through like a two-month fight camp and like you just win a big fight that like in your head you're like this is the biggest thing ever like the way like you build up a fight in, in my head at least mm-hmm. like i'm like just as like like mount everest right like the climb the training the like fight and then winning and then at the end of it it's like your family's like oh like you should stop fighting like you know it's like instead of like hey congratulations like you Mm -hmm. killed it like you know but do you think that like pushes you to go even harder like or do you prefer if they're like a little bit more supportive like Mm -hmm. if you had to yeah if you had to pick some people like that negative reinforcement you know what i mean true but what's how how are you uh motivated you know yeah i think for me like uh, i could maybe it did get me to that like subconsciously like i'm i'm maybe at that like stage where like I'm like, okay, like, F these guys. Like, I'm going to prove everybody wrong, right? Exactly. Right? And and that is probably a big tool because even, like, my close friends mm-hmm. would, like, when I was in grade nine and I was thinking about, like, taking this path and okay. talking about it more vocally. Damn, like, that's hella early, grade Yeah, nine. very, yeah, good. Yeah. So I was, like, really vocal about it. I started, like, doing, like, light training. Before I did my first amateur fight in mm-hmm. 2012, I was doing, like, little tournaments, like, uh, you would kind of like it would be it wouldn't be a fight it would just be like experience basically sure, you would sure. go against like other gyms kind of like old school like karate like you would go to other gyms and like nice. spar them and stuff so okay. that was kind of my pre so it was like fight club before fight club but, but, yeah exactly right <laughs> yeah super like super cool but it was like something that like i recommend for everybody to do just cuz it it, it kind of shows you what mm-hmm. what it takes to for sure you know so um yeah, sorry, I kind of lost my train. No, of you're talking about like the the Afghans. And, like, yeah, the Afghans. Yeah, so weird. even like even before, like they would all like my uncle would come support me in those like early things, and like he would he would just think that it's like a like just like a fun thing, like that's sport, mm. like you know what I mean, like True. like soccer kind of. Okay. But it's like it's it's not as much sacrifice. Like soccer, mm. like it takes early talent. It takes like you know like maybe like somebody training you from a young age and like you develop. Whereas fighting, like you don't need to be in it like at a super young age right and yeah. so the age that i got into it at they thought that it would pass you know my family thought uh, it would pass like it, these little tournaments like jujitsu tournaments or like muay thai tournaments that i would go to they thought like okay he's just doing it to like have like some sport like okay. in his life and like be healthy and like i think it's gonna pass and little did they know i just like kept continuing, facts, and continuing bro, you know? facts. So. but that's just like a testament to the person you are you know mm. like self-discipline is so key in anything in life mm. and like as a fighter your self-discipline has to be the highest because yeah. you're like at the end of the day it's literally you yeah that's you are pushing you exactly so if you don't and the fact that you've done it for so long mm. just shows like no no i'm i really want this yeah like, i really want to do this yeah and like did you develop that or was it there from day one I think like deep down inside it was there from day one. Like I'm the Crazy. one thing that roots me to that is like I'm super competitive. Mm. So I always want to win. Like even like my girlfriend will tell you like <laughs> like I don't let her win in shit. Like oh, really? I, like we're like we'll go play arcade games and like I'm like going there to win. Word. Like, yeah, you know? Like uh so How good is this cupcake by the way? Oh it's killer, bro. Not bad, right? Yeah, man. Like usually yeah. cupcakes are super sweet. I like, like I like lemon flavored shit. You oh, know? me too. Like yeah. lemon loaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, lemon. do you know that Muhammad, the prophet, he preferred lemon flavored things. No way. Yeah. I love lemon flavored yeah. things. I put lemon on everything. There's a oh, sick, nice. Uh-huh. Me too. Me too. I, oh. The thing is, I, I was reading this book. Uh, sorry to cut you off. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> but um, I was reading this uh, book about the, the life of Muhammad. Yeah. And uh, I forgot his last name, Martin Wiggs or some shit. I forgot his name. But mm. like, um, it just talked about interesting things. Like, like Muhammad would like carry like equivalent of a toothbrush with him, mm. and he would brush his teeth before eating a meal and then when he was going around with his homies uh i guess he liked lemons but that's a, a side thing yeah um if he went somewhere and he's like i'm not hungry all his homies wouldn't eat because they're like the prophet didn't accept this food so, so we we're should. not gonna do it and then he was like bro chill fam yeah like, they, i'm not hungry right now yeah you, <laughs> you guys eat. can eat interesting. but it's so interesting like yeah. even that kind of stuff was written and documented somehow and yeah. they were able to bring it up so bro Check that book out. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. yeah. Please, uh, I'll text you later, and if you can yeah, send it to me, I'll send you a few. I think it's dope. I like people that like like to work on themselves. You yeah, know? and like to learn from every aspect. Because mm. it's like a never ending journey, right? Like self like development. Like it's a journey that like you always can do better. Almost, you know. True. You True. Know? So, and that's like I just read the like water, which was. Um, a Bruce Lee book that sure. his daughter wrote. Oh, okay. Yeah, so 
she really talks about like i guess things that he would say and like how she, he would teach it to them right because yeah. i mean he's bruce lee i think is someone that's like he was very vocal in front of the camera yeah but he preached what he truly believed right mm -hmm. and and yeah his daughter's uh perspective on what he was saying is, is is super cool with like you know developing yourself constantly and yeah. like almost being zen but like having that fire inside you as well when you need to you know mm. so it's just like yin and yang and usually people when they hear yin and yang they think like good and bad yeah you know like negative yeah. positive yeah but it's it's not it's just like they both need to be there in order for it to be a whole circle right yeah exactly so. that's sick yeah I'm, I'm a huge fan of bruce lee uh, mm. there's um kobe bryant actually spoke about something mm. he said that um it's interesting because he won an oscar i think because of this and um for his creative work crazy kobe bryant kobe like he bryant, had a uh, i think animation company and that he made something about basketball and mm. he won a um oscar but one thing he was talking about is he said that fear and darkness is something you need it's actually mm. positive like you can channel it to become positive when people are saying negative things about you use that energy and because like you have to remember like people forget like there's a point where everybody hated kobe bryant like yeah. he would go to him and they'd boo him as soon as he gets the ball wow and he would just like dominate yeah and he would just go in but like think about when you go somewhere and mm. there are thousands of people on television of course they're literally booing you when you touch the ball yeah you suck you suck and he's just like Killing destroying it. it yeah but he's so in it yeah you know and there was a clip of him like um he like uh you know celebrities are always sitting courtside because yeah. they're bawling as fuck chris rock was sitting right beside kobe bryant and he's like joking, trolling, Kobe Bryant's face, nothing. Wow. And then there's another clip where uh, Matt Barnes, he takes the basketball and just whips it at his face. But Kobe Bryant's face is like not moving. Wow. You know, bro. I've seen that clip. You saw that clip? Yeah, I've bro, seen that clip. Any yeah. human reaction yeah. is like you flinch. flinch you force. 100%. Like, bro, whip some shit to your face. Yeah. You react that way. He's just like nothing. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. That was cool. Yeah. That was actually really cool. And the, I, I did see the Chris Rock one too. Okay. That was super cool too, man. Yeah. So something about yeah. them, that meant like the darkness and being able to channel that in a positive way. Because mm. uh, like, bro, if everything is too positive all the time and then when something bad happens, you wouldn't know how to deal with it. Yeah. And how do you know, like, if there was no bad in this world, how would you know the difference between good and bad? True. You know what I mean? You, like, you appreciate the good so much because you know how the bad is. Well, mm -hmm. some people do, right? So. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to make this conversation about, like, a, a religion thing. Yeah. But that's one of the cool things that I love about religion. Mm. It's, like, they teach you through stories that, like, here's, like... It's like a folk tale. It's like you read something, I'm not saying religions are folk tales. Yeah. Don't come at me, guys. Yeah. Anybody listening? <laughs> Anybody listening? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Atheists are like, I'm killing. Them. Good yeah. job. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> More um, it's better to be agnostic about things. Yeah. Like, there's an entity that exists, and I'm just like reading these books. And then what they tell you when the story is like kind of done, you get something out of it. Mm. You know, like even like Buddha's story where he, he was a prince and. Um, nobody um like he uh, nobody would show death or anything negative to him that's what mm -hmm. his dad didn't want so by the time he's like i think older like in his 30s and then he goes outside of this kingdom that's massive mm. he sees a man that's like dead and he's like why is that guy sleeping and he's like no no that's dead the guy's dead mm. he didn't know what that was wow because he was so sheltered from it yeah and then he like rebelled and went and did his own thing and everything yeah. but it's like almost that it sucks to say like you kind of need this exposure therapy where yeah. you're kind of seeing um the bad as well you, yeah you need that balance you know and that's where totally. that yin and yang thing you just yeah. brought up yeah it's like it needs to be there it needs to be there yeah. yeah totally and it's crazy because like talking about religion for like a brief second too it's like sure. um recently like like i i mean after my most recent win i had all these like outlets like kind of share my stuff like afghan outlets oh dope dope so I, I got some comments on my pictures like like this guy doesn't like and mind you like these people don't even know me right? yeah like these people have they like live in like the uk or afghanistan sure. or somewhere else right and they're like ah oh, this guy he don't rep my flag like uh that's you, you, you don't pray you don't do ramadan and i'm like well yeah like technically i don't but mm -hmm. How, like you don't even know me like yeah. how do you how do you have like mm -hmm. the, the the thought of like just going oh, okay i'm gonna comment this and like yes. just bash me and like create a picture for other people that don't know me True. to 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 just build yourself up or mm. what whatever reason you're doing it for you yeah. know bro that shit's so whack so yeah, whack, bro. so fucking you know I mean? whack yeah so how do you deal with it like when you see comments like that um i like it i've never seen it on my own page mm -hmm. where like i had to like I took a second, like, my immediate thought was, like, be like, yo, like, you don't know me, like, F you kind of thing. But then I'm like, I'm like, kind of, he wants a reaction from me. 
So I'm giving him that reaction, mm -hmm. which kind of means that he's winning. You know yes. what I mean? So I, I just ignored it. Good, yeah. good man. That's, yeah. that's the way yeah. you have to do it. At yeah. the same time, like he's not practicing. Like Bruce Lee, practice what he preach. Practice yeah. what you preach. Yeah. If you are a Muslim, ded dedicated and everything, yeah. your relationship with God is your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That person's relationship. Who are you to like? You're not. Are you acting like God? Are you speaking on God's behavior? Yeah. Are you pr a prophet now, son? Yeah. yeah is, that, exactly. is that what we got to talk to yeah, you now? Bro. Yeah. It's like, bro, I hate that shit. Bro, that shit's all over. Like, even on TikTok. I don't, are you on TikTok? Uh, a little bit, yeah. If you, like, do some shit and Afghan related, some people will be like, that shit's haram. They bring that up. And, like, mm. bro, like, who are you? Like, yeah. Why like, are you talking? Why are you yeah. doing this? But people are bored. Social media, you get a voice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's so interesting. Like, there's so much hate. And, like, I, I would think that, like, in this day and age like mm -hmm. you would want to like support your people more so than like bash them in my i guess that's the way i see it right mm -hmm. so that's the way you how you are how, how you were raised kind how of thing. i was raised yeah yeah and i mean it did take time because obviously like there's there's always jealousy is a thing right like jealousy is like a thing that you, is like normal to everybody but i feel like and i feel like people that do comment they're like maybe low-key jealous of like what you're doing and how comfortable you are maybe in front of the camera like with tiktoks and stuff like that yeah. and they're like oh like this guy's just haram and bashing sure. my stuff you know yes. so i feel like they they have that jealousy but like you and they don't know that like you can get past that mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you don't you don't need to be like jealous you can be happy for people and like praise people even if you don't know them like you know like i'll message like people that have like three four million followers yeah. they don't probably even like look at my comment but i'm always yeah. like yo that's super cool man like mm -hmm. completely like support you kind of vibe like always send good vibes to them like they probably that's don't awesome. even see it but mm -hmm. it's just like i'm i'm just sending like good vibes because there's so much hate on on social media right so, crazy, crazy yeah that uh bro that, that's so dope and the thing is like um do you know xn yeah, yeah okay uh not comparing it to him but yeah it's just something like before he was everybody's like yo this guy's crazy he hmm. would literally dm people that he thought was dope and be like yo your music is dope your wow. stuff is sick and sometimes like unfortunately he passed and yeah. that situation happened sometimes people find out afterwards like oh shit that guy was in my other messages he sent me something like i like your music and shit like that so cool so he's so confident in what he does where he's like i can appreciate something else mm. you know and that's again the type of person you are yeah that you're like i'm not putting my insecurity out there i can recognize somebody and you you might get that's where your competitive spirit is probably there where yeah. you see someone's dope you're like yo you killing that shit yeah but i'm gonna try to like i'll do that i'm gonna top you yeah, yeah absolutely man absolutely so cool man like mm -hmm. yeah really cool but afghans bro i, I think uh here's here's uh, are you a, an iphone guy or are you iphone okay are you on clubhouse no okay you need to be on clubhouse okay okay if you want to connect to the dope Afghan community, yeah, yeah. some of them are like whack, but a lot of them are dope. Yeah. Go to Clubhouse. Clubhouse. You'll get like the Afghan Canadian, Afghan American, Af like the more modernized ones. Cool. And they're looking to support like dope people. Yeah. So they, I, to me, I don't know any fighters. Literally yeah. zero. I know you, of course. Yeah. Um, I know that other dude, uh, what's his name? Nazar? Nazrat, yeah. Nazrat. I yeah. know him, but yeah. like, I think he's more like I don't see him being on social media. Mm. You know, I, I yeah. that's yeah, I, not as much. I, I yeah. don't. He's not like uh, I again. I don't follow him. Yeah, right. Fair enough. But uh, I know you, and like, bro, you could kill it in that platform because mm. it's just connecting. You're connecting yeah. with people, and at the same time, as much as the shit you're doing now, which is like just for you, you're yeah. building yourself, you're building your brand, like your impact will be felt like maybe ten years from now, mm. where like a young Afghan fighter is going to be like, bro, I saw Ali fighting, and yeah. I was like oh shit, I've never seen an Afghan do that. Yeah. And then that motivated me to like want to even do this. Right. I didn't know that was an option. Yeah. People don't understand like, uh, you know, they say identity politics. Oh, this per we hired this person for this. But I think we need more people to do different shit. Yeah. All we know from Af being an Afghan or just Asian is like doctor, lawyer, engineer. Yeah. Shit like that. Yeah. You know? That's so true. It's so whack too. Yeah, it is whack, bro. And it's like, yeah, and it's like, it's not even like your parents so much telling you, like, obviously they want you to do that, mm -hmm. but it's more so like your aunt and uncle and being yeah. like, oh, well, look at my son. He does this. And then it's yeah. like, fuck, like my son's doing music or my son's yeah. fighting. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's like constant like battle between like, oh, I'm going to one up you. I'm going to yeah, one up you. I'm that's gonna what it is. You, you know what parents I mean? love, Afghan parents the most, Asian yeah. parents. They love to, because uh, even uh, like Asian parents, there's a tiger moms. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know about that. No. That's like, uh, I think, uh, it could be Korean moms. I could be wrong. Yeah. But like, it's like the ones that are just like, you got 99%. You need 100. Oh. Get the bonus, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. But it's all about the Asian mentality where you got to make sure your kids yeah. are like your flex items. Mm. Well, my son did this. Yeah. My daughter did this shit. Right. You know? Yeah. And we're just kind of like, 
Accessories. Accessories, <laughs> yeah. Like a cool car or like a Lambo or something, you know? Lambo. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Uh, my Everybody son's a Toyota, you know? <laughs> <laughs> my son's a Honda. But, it's like, we need yeah. that Tesla, bro. Yeah. We need that fucking Elon Musk. <laughs> so funny. Man. Yeah, but that's like, I didn't know that e- something is, is like coding. Like, I don't, uh, now I'm meeting Afghans that code, Afghans that work in software, um, that actually build things, mm. but more from the States. I didn't know anybody uh, oh, in Vancouver yeah. or even Toronto that did stuff like that. You know, it's like more of the traditional jobs. Yeah. We see the car dealership. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody yeah. got a car. A restaurant, a restaurant? I got a restaurant. Yeah, restaurants. We got some. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And not, not to hate them. Great businesses. Yeah, dope shit. But just yeah. not for everyone. No, you know? Exactly. So uh, there's other ways to make a living. There's yeah. other ways. And like, uh, it, it might be harder, but like, it's what that person chose. Yeah. It's not your Paul to be like, do something else because I'm looking out for you. It's like, yeah. bro, that person. And I get it. Maybe if you're younger. Yeah. But as you grow up and Afghan people don't realize that you're growing. Yeah. And that's, they, they'll always have that opinion. Yeah. They'll be like, you should do this or this. You know, do, do you get opinions on how you should fight did you did they give you like why don't you do this instead yeah like i mean i've never really gotten that yeah. to be honest but that that again maybe goes to like i don't hang out with too many afghans okay. right so like i mean like i don't think family like looking back no i got me all afghan uh mishnawa we tell you about some salam bogey the farsi the salam bogey my amigi afghan how should i say in jana ke tan show exactly ma khum asa me agar me khayin farsi ma khum me tan gap zanim farsi am yad tar um polimo the guy kasa safedas wa khoch nayfam kadam the song ma me tan war da zanim da zanim yeah that's so i was just saying like we got white people on the other side uh, we could be swearing at them this whole time they have no idea yeah <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. But uh, that's 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 a plug for the Afghans. There you go, uh, we'll right? Send it out to them. See? We yeah, plug see, them. We still we, rep them. We still rep. The, uh, the thing is, bro, we got to rep. That's, we have to. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, because we didn't get, we didn't have uh, those peop- those images on in media. Yeah. So uh, essentially, you became that image yeah. that you needed to see when you were a kid. Right. You know? I agree. Because yeah. like, uh, did you get a lot of like, who's... Uh, whose son is doing this? Who else is doing this? Did yeah. you get that? Yeah, I did get that a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was that was really big, you know? Yeah. So I look at it as better. Like it's it's more like, well, hold on a second, you're telling me no one's doing this? Yeah. So I have a competitive edge. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, the, so I'd be one of the uh uh you know, uh, what is it called? It's like um it's called also the uh, bleeding lines. It's like you can be one of the leaders in the industry. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like automatically, bro, you're if you were like just starting out, yeah. you know, and you see no other people there, that's such an advantage because, okay, here's here's my spew on this yeah. whole thing. Yeah. So businesses only care about making money. Mm. Uh, like, wow, that's yeah. everyone knows that, uh, yeah. right? But they want to target properly. So mm. what if you build an audience? that is catered to Muslims, Afghans, or whatever. Like yeah. you find that audience that you cater to. Yeah. And then you're a fighter, you're a musician, whatever the case is. Yeah. As you grow and you have that audience, there's going to be uh, businesses because everyone looks at you with purchasing power. They're like, oh, wait, mm. Afghans are making money now. Who's one of the top Afghans in this industry? Because like, bro, California, New York, bro, Afghans running shit. Like, no they, way. Bro, they got like businesses. They, they're hell, like multi-million. They're I'm talking about like they're doing their thing. Wow. But they're just so focused on like getting the bag, you know, yeah. uh, which is they have this more modern look versus like, no, it's okay. Let's be sanguine, you mm. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Not about that yeah. life, you know. They're yeah. not going hard on religion all the time. They're like, let's just, let, they love God. They pray all the time. Like yeah. they pray, like if you just pray, yeah. you know, like and focus on God. Yeah. That's, to me, I think like that's right? important. Yeah. You know, I, I don't necessarily need to like do every single thing by the book in my perspective. Yeah, I uh, agree with that perspective. But that's why like the Afghans there, like they're killing it. And then uh, if you become, and as you're going towards this direction, yeah. one of the, like the influencers in the Afghan community, you're a brand now and yeah. brands want to, uh, they see your power. Yeah. So they want to be like, oh shit, this, this guy has X amount of people following him. Yeah. Uh, following doesn't have to be social media. It could yeah. just be like in general, they general. know you, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh shit, they're going to watch this fight. Let's stamp this brand on top of him because mm. now there's purchasing power. Mm. But Afghans don't fucking see that shit. No. They don't see that they got to build their own people yeah. because- there's an economy around it, and now the next guy could come in because of what you've built. Exactly. You know, man, yeah. you hit the nail on the head. Bro. No, it's like, like we're we're, yeah. we're just kind of like, it looks like a bad business decision. Like, oh my god, he's being a fight. It's like no, like realistically speaking, yeah. there's a lot of money in the sport. Yeah, but totally. you got to be smart in it. Like, yeah. people got to support you. You exactly. know, exactly. Yeah. So it's I like, totally agree, and it's like, 
it's crazy because it's like when, being Afghan, like you said, it's like lawyer, doctor, engineer, mm-hmm. and it's like you know when like I I work closely with a lot of cannabis companies, right? Yeah, and it's like that's haram, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's like big no no, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like if you're doing drugs, you're like a chassis, chassis right? Yeah, right? You're yeah. just like a junkie. It's an I, Afghan podcast now, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chassis, by the way, means probably like what? How would you describe stoner? St- but stoner, yeah. It's, it's like stoner, but it's worse because I think. Uh, they uh, mix opium, opium with yeah. uh, weed, with so weed like and tobacco, right? Tobacco, like yeah. uh, that's I think hashish. Hashish, yeah, hashish. Oh, that's hashish. But like uh, they mix it so it's like they become addicted to other shit, yeah. Not the, the actual weed, not the weed. So then they look like uh, motad. You know yeah. that word? Uh, Which is like yeah, I have, yeah, 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 yeah. You're addicted and shit yeah, like that. Yeah. So it's it's like that. Uh, but yeah, it's a negative connotation because that's Super, all they've seen. Yeah. They haven't seen like Wiz Khalifa smoking yeah. and making like <laughs> Grammys and shit, yeah, getting Grammys. Yeah, and like. Man, like I, I was, uh, I work closely with this uh, company called West Canna. Okay. Um, shout out they, West Canna. Yeah, shout out West Canna. Where yeah. are they based out of? Yeah, so they're Vancouver. Okay. Uh, they got a store on uh, 700 West Broadway. Nice. And uh, 1286 Robson Street. Dope. And I was there one day and I was just sitting there um, talking and this guy comes in and he's using cannabis and he had cancer and he's like, he's like telling the story and then I like kind of, I'm like, hey, I'll kind of like joined into the conversation and he was like yeah the doctors told me that i had uh six months to live Damn. and that was six years ago or like five years ago or so whatever yeah. he said at the time right mm-hmm. and he's like he like grabbed this like um cannabis oil it's mm-hmm. like an edible and uh it's phoenix tears and he had he takes that like every day and he's like this is what's keeping me alive oh, what is it the brand called phoenix tears uh, phoenix tears is like uh it's not a brand or anything there's a lot okay. of companies that make it it's an actual like product okay so they take like basically the uh, the cannabis plant they turn it into like uh, oil it's like almost like like black tar okay and uh yeah you just eat it and what does yeah. it taste like uh, I tried like because uh, they make it in both CBD and THC, and okay. I tried the CBD one, and it it just really tastes like like a mix of like ethanol and dirt. Okay, that's yeah. horrible. That's yeah, a it's, horrible. It tastes disgusting. Like I, I would not, I would not recommend it like as like a delicacy or anything, you know. But uh, it's medicine. It's, it's medicine, medicine. Okay, exactly. Okay. So yeah, and it's just like when you, I mean, like when you're going through cancer and stuff like that, it just like stimulates your appetite and things like that. And it's like when you see the benefits of this industry of like cannabis, right? It's like how can you as like a like an afghan or like whatever like would you rather see like your parent like or like somebody that you love go mm-hmm. through like pain and like like or like you know maybe take some cannabis oil to help them out and maybe they survive maybe they live like another six seven years you know exactly exactly so yeah bro afghans are about alternative medicine you know yeah, like yeah. they we love alternative we medicine do, like yeah. um what is that thing called uh we uh joining do you know what that is no okay I think fuck. I think it's fennel, fennel, fennel mm, seed. You mm, know fennel seed. Mm. Okay, fennel seed, and sometimes with a little sugar, it's good for your stomach. Any stomach issue, yeah. you have a spoonful of that, yeah. and you don't go to the fucking doctor yeah. or something. Yeah, my mom comes up with a lot of those. She things. comes up yeah, those yeah, kind of yeah, things, yeah, right? Yeah, um, super herbal, right? Yeah. So if they're focused on that, yeah. why would they not be focused on like, let me take some droplets of the CBD? Yeah, this is what help me. Yeah, non-psychoactive. You know, it, you know? They need to get rid of that stigma. You yeah, know, that's attached to it right yeah, now. Totally. But the like i said north american european afghans and stuff i think they move past that they I they, so, they yeah. see it bro like the new generation because like we have the internet you know yeah. like older people at this point it's tough to convince them yeah you know at this point you're at right. this point yeah. they're, they're just they know they think what they think and they're just gonna stay there yeah. you're gonna be like i'm just gonna, i'm cool with you just being this voice whatever yeah. Yeah. i'm gonna tune you out yeah. <laughs> Which is hard sometimes, but you know, it's hard when it's family, bro. Yeah, because like if it's a friend or someone toxic in your circle, yeah. you're like you're not in my circle anymore. Yeah, like family, it's I'm like oh, I'm fucking. I'm forced to like hang, see you once in a while. Wow, yeah, so, yeah, or sometimes more than once in a while. More, yeah, like every day, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, shit, man. Wow. Yeah, it's it, it's it's cool though, man. But but it's great to see, man. Like someone yeah. uh, Afghan, I, I support any with anything Afghan. Yeah, you know, I we need more Afghan people because we don't, bro. Like what the representation shit we had. Mm. We had fucking nine eleven came in. Yeah, and now uh, Osama. <laughs> yeah. yeah, is like this main dude. <laughs> yeah. that is connected to Afghanistan. But I'm like, hold on a second. That guy's from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that's you're not even doing it right. Right, you're being racist. Yeah, <laughs> right. Totally. It's like uh, it's the Saudis, not yeah. us. Yeah. But he just. Because he went to Afghanistan. I guess that's Hit where his operations and, stuff, and shit yeah. was. He was hiding there. But then he wasn't even hiding there. He was hiding in fucking Pakistan. Yeah. You know, this yeah. whole fucking time. And, and then you look at, like, the conspiracy. Like, obviously, it's a conspiracy <laughs> theory. And you can, like, dig yourself in yeah. there. It's like, you know? And it's like, he wasn't even 
Middle Eastern. He was like an American citizen, apparently, right? Bro, like he was trained by American. Like, right? I know if you were looking at his, like, yeah. whoa, conspiracy. Yeah. No, bro, search it up. He yeah. was uh, like his uh, brother and his family has worked for U.S. government. Like this is documented. Yeah. Like we can see, and they're they come from money. This yeah. guy is not somebody who's like this radical and was born there the whole time. No, yeah. bro, there's pictures of him wearing like normal clothes and like he's just beard, yeah. shaved beard yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. What are the fucking chances? They discover him and they killed him and they just threw him in the river. They yeah. didn't want any of that. Yeah. That's, see, certain things are sus. sus. Right? Yeah, super That's sus, right? Like, sus. But it's crazy how many people believe it, you know? Like there's so much evidence and it's like, oh no. Yeah, just... people are like, no, this is forever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, bro, like some people are playing video games at a higher level than we can understand. That's so They're true. playing video games with the whole world. Yeah. They're just like, like think about being like, a president mm. or like just something in that government level yeah or people that are even bigger than them that we don't know like the money that gets poured there and they're like hold on a second we need more people to support us yeah. how do we do this yeah. well why don't we just create this you yeah. know and that's where the conspiracy theory should come is about yeah but it's like when you give human beings that level of power do you think they're always going to use it in a positive light or they're going to try to benefit themselves in some way yeah it's all i feel like it's it's like once you reach that power and like that level it's like more self-driven you know true i feel yeah but then again i look at like people like i'm like how the hell did biden become president you yeah. know like, the this most, guy can barely make popular. it upstairs to, upstairs you know yeah. and it's like oh yeah that was that was you see that when yeah, you tried to that. like board the plane i'm like Jesus multiple Christ. times yeah yeah and this guy's like talking and like halfway through he like doesn't even know what he was saying mm -hmm. like how is this guy running the biggest like free world you know yeah like, and that's the thing that's kind of whack like we have um it it's in the states who are mostly because like we're just canadians looking at it yeah yeah but like outside, why yeah. the fuck are they, do they like people that are old as fuck no disrespect mm. to old people yeah but like wouldn't you want someone like mid 40s mid 50s that are like has energy to yeah. do shit right? and run the fucking country yeah versus like if you're 70 bro why the fuck do you want to be president yeah like, like why maybe you like do give shit? him a position in office where he's like maybe has a say like a or consultant like a consultant yeah, with consultant the fucking president yeah <laughs> But, like, man, I feel like the president should be, like, at least, like, 40, maybe, like yeah. 50. Yeah, maybe like. it's, like, Harris, who's, like, uh, do you know Harris? Um, Kamala Harris, she's yeah, the vice yeah, president. Yeah. Um, maybe she's, like, Loki the president. Right. And, like, doing all the shit. There's and he's just kind of, like, the face like of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of theories about that, too, where she's, like, technically, like, Biden became president. He's going to step down, and she's going to take over. And Bro, not even step down. He could possibly just die. Die. Because he's old. Die, right? <laughs> right? Like, die, yeah. Die. Yeah. Like, yeah. and nobody would be like, damn, let's look into this. We're yeah. like, they'll be like, well, he's, yeah, we he saw said, the signs. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we see him on TV. He can barely talk. Yeah. We saw this coming. Bro, I saw this hilarious fucking TikTok. Yeah. And it was, um, it's like, um, Biden is like killing it in Alabama. Mm. Like his numbers are really high. Okay. And then the, the guy's like, Alabama. why Alabama? Yeah. And then the TikTok clip is like, um, uh, uh, I really love this lady right here. And then he puts his hand over and it's, he thought it was his wife, but it was his sister. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> his wife is on the other yeah, side. Yeah. And then the guys are like, oh, that's weird. And then he sees Alabama because, you know, like, oh, it's yeah, a yeah, joke. The inbred the, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> the inbred yeah, 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 yeah. That's so funny. Fucking like hilarious, bro. Yeah. Fucking like hilarious. TikTok's yeah. cool, man. TikTok's funny. That, yeah. that shit. Yeah. It's super cool. I didn't know you can make that much money on TikTok, bro. You, you can make like hella money with like brand deals and everything. And yeah. You can grow really quick. Yeah. Are you on TikTok? Ah, uh, like I'm, I'm on it just cause like I love like when I'm like, so like when I'm cutting weight or something like sure, that, sure. like something to just distract me, right? Like keep my mind like off food, you yes. know? <laughs> cause I'm like, I like cut 20 pounds before a fight, right? So like crazy. The last like week I cut about like 10 pounds, you mm -hmm. know, like so, and it's all usually water weight. So it's like less eating, less carbs, less, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm just like something that'll just keep my mind busy. Damn. And, yeah. That's why I used, I have a TikTok, but I should like start posting more. I just... It's like a hard route for me because it's like so many people are so good. Yeah. You know, like some of the mm -hmm. content out there, like Jason Derulo. Yes. Like his shit is like mm -hmm. off the chains, man. Of I'm course. Like, you know, of course. but like, that guy's like the top top. The top you can't top. ignore him. <laughs> ignore him. <laughs> yeah, ignore like, everyone I can't compete there. with this yeah. guy. <laughs> Bro, yeah. just take your clips that you're fighting, like, yeah. uh, and then just like uh youtube to mp4 yeah. whatever that link is yeah and then just like put it just put 30 seconds of like your highlights yeah punch the guy right in the face oh, yeah. that backs up yeah. you know just oh, get the highlights yeah, yeah. just post Keep it, it up route. yeah interesting i yeah. think it'll be good bro people yeah. will see it and like ha hashtag afghan you'll get some people be like yo bro this is haram this is haram. fighting is haram <laughs> don't do this That's fucking so shit funny. uh bro can we get some more coffee is that cool thank you sir let's take a quick break and hear a word from our sponsors ball life studios 
Hey everyone, this is Coach Eliza Chavez from Ball Life Studio, located in the Bay Area in sunny California. Here at Ball Life Studio, we offer elite level basketball training for all ages and skill levels. We give exposure to and develop all our athletes to not only reach their max potential on the court, but off the court as well. We teach and develop the whole athlete from the mind to the body. For a limited time, coffee and banana listeners will receive an additional 15% discount on all training sessions and basketball products with promo code COFFEE15. That's C-O-F-F-E-E-1-5 with no spaces. Visit www.balllifestudio.com forward slash shop and receive an additional 15% discount on all training sessions and basketball products. That's www.balllifestudio.com forward slash shop with promo code COFFEE15. We have some exciting events coming to you all this year, so stay tuned with our yearly schedule by following us on Instagram at Ball Life Studio. Here at Ball Life Studio, we are all about the ball life. Thanks, Chavez. And now we're back to Coffee and Banana. You, you want some more coffee too, bro? Oh, sure, yeah. Okay. I love some. Thank dope you. Dope shit. My man's coming in. Yeah. It's a cool sis. It's always <laughs> dope. Yeah. Um, but bro, tell me more about the process of you cutting weight. That's fucking interesting. Yeah. Maybe people can listen to this and be like, oh, this is some good advice. Maybe yeah, low key, you. I'm trying to cut weight because like the fucking pandemic, I gained like 10 more pounds than I yeah. wanted to. I'm slowly getting uh, better because I'm working out again. Mm. But um, yeah, it's fucking tough. T- give us some advice. So just on that, a quick statistic that I heard today, apparently like 40% of Americans gained up to like... 25 pounds over the pandemic of like Fuck. quarantine and that's fucked going the wrong direction yeah. but um yeah. americans of yeah. course americans right yeah <laughs> um yeah i mean like it for me like i walk around like 155 58 usually okay. uh pounds and um i diet down like i mean i'm working out like two to three times a day Okay. When I'm in fight camp. So when I'm prepping for a fight, the last, I would say, eight weeks, um, I'm training every day, twice a day, mm-hmm. sometimes three. Crazy. Yeah. And each session like is what, about like... What hour do you start? And like, is it midday or end of the night? Like, how do you balance that out throughout the day? So what I do basically is I, in the morning, I'll do like a cardio session mm-hmm. um, somewhere between like, depending on the day um, mm-hmm. and what I have to do that day, between sure. like uh, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. In between there, I get is an hour. Is your cardio run. like treadmill or other stuff? I like to run outside. Okay. I feel like treadmill is like so boring unless I have like something to watch. Sure, like, sure. I usually watch fights or something. Yeah, but nice. I do like out running outside, like being mm-hmm. in nature. Yep. It's like another cool thing about that is like running outside. If you like just run, it's a form of meditation actually. Mm-hmm. So 100%. Yeah, I agree. You know? Yeah. yeah you just that. like focus on like something and like you just like. Cause it's like, you're not really thinking about running. Like, yes. you know, you're just thinking about other things. Running so natural. But Bro, just uh, don't forget your point, but yeah. just the fact there, yeah. Berkeley, what they did is they designed their campus that if you need to go to a different class, mm. you would have to walk. Cause they found out that people, that the more you walk, the more you are with your thoughts and you would think about it more. So wow. there was like, oh, I forgot this author's, this writer's name, but he would wake up in the morning, go for a walk for an hour, then mm. come home, then write. Because wow. he's gathering all his thoughts. Interesting. And then they found out like there's this, that yeah. that's a positive thing like yeah. the more you are just walking or just more like by yourself yeah that active movement so the berkeley made the campus like that yeah and i think other campuses are starting to follow that same trend that's really cool which yeah is- and i i totally agree with that and like especially with not just like martial arts but anything like that like mm-hmm. i feel like in order to get more information like you have to like clear your thoughts True. and like you know and through meditation i feel like you're able to like you know kind of create a blank canvas exactly. and then like it'll allow you to what bruce lee says is like f- fill your cup with water like you know you don't want to like look at your cup and like keep it full at all times you want to kind of like empty the cup and then fill it back up empty Got the it. cup and fill it back up it's that so, balance for that all. balance that exactly. balance yeah but you were saying before yes. i cut you off the cardio is yeah, where cardio you start in the, in the morning. morning yeah between eight and eleven um and then i'll go in um for about an hour Mm -hmm. um usually in the morning i'm like by myself or with another teammate i'll go into the gym and i'll i have the keys so blessings uh and i open it up and Mm -hmm. i just like hit the bag is there a specific gym you want to shout them out Uh, tristar vancouver yeah they're on uh edmund street uh 7759 edmund so if you anybody listening and want to get some work in you guys are welcome tristar vancouver vancouver yeah got it tristar vancouver go ahead yeah so uh then i'll go in for um a little bit like maybe between like one to two like Mm -hmm. i'll go in and i'll uh 
I'll hit the bag or I'll like work on specific things. Like maybe I'm working on the jab or I'm working on my like cross or I'm working on a specific kick. Sick. So then I'll just, because repetition is like how you get it. Cause in a fight you, you, you're, you're fighting, but you don't really have time to like think like if me nice. and you're fighting, like yep. I, I don't have time to be like, okay, like his left hand is down. Like okay. I, I like, it's like my myelin or my subconscious needs to just be like that, that repetitiveness. Like, so yes. if I'm in training, if I'm like constantly throwing my right hand, it's like glued in my hand on how to throw it. Right. So like, yes. I don't have to think about how to throw it. Got it. So crazy. So the more you rep specific techniques, mm -hmm. the more I feel you're, you're able to glue it in your it's mind. Like muscle memory. Muscle kind of memory. Thing. Exactly. Yeah, right. True. Like, you know, Kobe so the, Bryant doesn't like do a layup, like uh, thinking about it. Yes. He just fucking. He's Facts. Like, I'm here. Okay, lay out. Dude. Facts. Yeah. Fun fact. Yeah. Kobe Bryant. Yeah. You brought him up, so I got you. Yeah. Gotta give yeah. you another one. Yeah. Gotta give you another one. I love the shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. I appreciate sick. it. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know I was wearing this shirt. No way. Fucking sick. Yeah. Kobe. He's legend. Yeah, R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. Um, thing with Kobe is like, um, Kevin Hart said this before. He was a comedian. Mm. He was actually about, trying to be a basketball player. Yeah, so And short. then he <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so he's in. But when you're young, who yeah, cares, who right? Cares. You you might grow. Yeah. Right. He went to a camp with Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was injured. And he played with his opposite hand, his left hand, and he beat everyone like it was nothing. And he wow. was just not even trying. That's when he's like, I'm not going to make it to the NBA. Yeah. He saw Kobe Bryant. Wow. And then Kobe Bryant in an NBA game versus Dallas. Like literally, there's, a, you know, the shot clock, it's like yeah. 24 seconds. And the time is falling away without even thinking. He's fading away with his, he takes the ball with his left hand, fading away three, one-handed, takes a shot, nothing but net. Wow. Not even thinking about it. Wow. And then for practice, he can shoot left hand from half court, making it like, like wow. very high percentage than like most people with their strong arm. Yeah, yeah, You know? Yeah. And that goes with the repetition thing you're talking about mm. over and over again that you don't have to think about. Right. So you're saying, yeah. so you're pretty much saying yeah. that Dragon Ball Z was all a fucking lie when yeah. they punch and like, oh, yeah. this strength, yeah. this power. Yeah. Like how, so yeah. they're, th they're at, <laughs> this like an analysis is going yeah. on during yeah. the fight yeah you have no time for that no, no you're time just for that. fucking no. reacting and yeah. on to the next it's a matter of like inches and seconds and milliseconds like you know, just, like there's an opening in one second and that second opening is gone you know crazy crazy so so uh, you do your rep uh, repetitive exercises yeah. and everything yeah how much weight training do you involve on uh i used training? to never weight train okay i used to never weight train like but now um, actually after, uh, reading Kobe Bryant's book, oh shit. yeah, he does a lot of like, um, cause what I found like with weight training was like, I was getting a, the, what I thought was I was getting stiff, but it was okay. actually just like muscle soreness and things like that. But I felt mm -hmm. like I was getting stiff and I was getting big and I didn't want to get big. I wanted to be like cardio machine. Got like, it. You know like Bruce I mean? Lee's Bruce like Lee, cut. Yeah. You want to be yeah, cut. Cut. Exactly. Yeah. But then with nowadays with all the technology and everything and all the science behind it, like people like are like jacked mm -hmm. but like not jacked just like strong but yes. like like dense muscle like you nice. know what i mean so yeah I, I i recently maybe two fights ago i started working out um like once or twice a week Crazy. just weights and just... bands like you know mm -hmm. kobe bryant and uh tom brady they use like a lot of resistant bands and stuff like that okay. which is like is because when when you when i work out like free weights a lot mm -hmm. um i'm like super sore right yeah. so it's like hard for me to do my next session or my session after that like yeah. if i'm like doing two three sessions a day like super hard to like do another one like after like a heavy like squat day or something you know what yep. i mean so yep. but um yeah so i uh i um partnered up with or i got sponsored by uh, new edge alliance uh mm -hmm. which is on austin um they're like a strength and conditioning gym crazy nice. um and mm -hmm. yeah i started doing uh, a little bit of that with fruit and then started implementing uh, new edge weights. alliance, new edge alliance. Uh, yeah. austin and what where are they it's like on like near blue mountain area oh like, Austin Blue Mountain. Yeah. is that in that complex by tim hortons kind of thing um it's because there's like pizza hut in that area yeah there's like a rona in his plaza i know that there's a wait there's a room oh yeah i know that one yeah there's yeah. a little caesars there Little Caesars, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. how I know. Yeah, yeah, I, know the three places. I think there's a pub there too. <laughs> there is a pub there, John yeah. B. Pub. John B. Pub. There that's we the go. One. Yeah, nice. yeah. So in that complex, in that complex, uh, yeah, is what is the place? Yeah, you're New Edge Alliance. New Edge Alliance. Yeah. Cool. So, um, I started like uh, doing some stuff. Well, I've been using him for a while, but he's more like conditioning. So mm -hmm. then uh, we started doing more free, more weights with him, and then I noticed myself getting stronger. Crazy. But not gaining weight, so like I would have to fight in a weight class above, but I was just getting stronger for my weight class. And that's dope. And I overpowering a lot of my guys. So 
I was like, fuck, well, maybe this this does work, you know? Yeah. And then it goes back to Dragon Ball Z when they're in the hyperbolic time, tra- time chamber Facts, and they're like bro. training with like That's zero what gravity. I'm talking about, <laughs> my man. He comes in with the bars. Yeah. Ali's so, like, yo, I'm yeah. going to throw in some yeah. hyper. Bro, hyperbolic time chamber is so sick. Mm. A lot of times I'm like, fuck, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. Yeah. Right? That, that would, would be a game changer. Change everything, yeah. you know? Yeah. But low key, bro, we have it. It's the yeah. world. It's the world. We, ju- we can choose to like the whole aging process. Yeah. I feel like it's we can control it you yeah. know like we saw somebody who was like back then when i saw i thought like 40 was hella old i thought yeah. like 40 oh shit yeah when you're like 18 yeah like something, i'm like 40 uh, yeah i thought even 20 was old when i was yeah. like fucking like five years old yeah. you know what i mean yeah but once you get to that age i still think like as a kid i'm just as curious i'm just as passionate yeah. about the shit that i used to like you know i did i thought like people are like oh you like cartoons and stuff now but you'll grow out of it yeah fucking i love dragon ball z i still love dragon ball z yeah you know yeah i'm exactly. still gonna fuck with more shit related to that yeah uh, i played basketball so i was i was more into that yeah i don't know if you remember but i was like really about that life you were about that yeah. life yeah huh? like, you wait, wait you went to port moody right i went to banting and i went to glen eagle Banting and Glen Eagle. Fuck, Glen why, did Eagle. I think, yeah. why did I think you went to Port Moody? Because I was in Banting. Like, Banting was uh, was in Port Moody. Um, and I lived in Cottonwood when I first moved here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's where all the Africans were. All the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so funny. Fuck. Are they still there? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think they like tore it down actually oh, shit. yeah because i like, know it's like brand new like they're building all these yeah, new buildings new there. buildings around yeah, there. Yeah. yeah everything's going high rise right? yeah, yeah, yes. yeah that's good though it looks nice yeah yeah so yeah and then uh so going back to what my training session so i'm already done around like two three i'll go home mm-hmm. i'll eat and then uh go back to train at 8 p.m to about 10 got it and that's that's kind of my training day. crazy and yeah. like how many times uh per week do you train? uh so every day i do at least two um except for saturday and saturday we spar got it so it's kind of like uh you're you're emulating the fight mm-hmm. so you're not you, you want to be like really like uh on point that day you know so are you fighting tonight after uh, this no no so like um i fought two weeks ago yep and um i'm gonna take this week off and then i start again next week got it yeah, okay yeah, six yeah. yeah so and then like uh you you brought up diet and everything mm. um do you like cut out like certain shit when it's time like to prepare for something you know what like be- i learned everything on the fly like mm. uh cajun johnson the coach i'm working with right nice. now cajun, he was in, yeah, shout out him shout out yeah, he was in the ufc man og in the game and he's like unfortunately i didn't have him throughout my whole career like earlier earlier yeah. right yeah so um at the time my coaches didn't really give me pointers like on like hey you should diet like this or diet like that mm. like i would like starve myself bro and like yeah like I would be like training on like no carbs, right? And I, yeah. I would, cause they would be like, oh, you gotta cut out carbs, you gotta cut out carbs. But it's like, now you like, everything that I've learned now, it's like I eat carbs right up until like the day I have to cut weight, you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's it's totally cool. And yeah, it's just like, I'm my training is much more efficient. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, it's not like, because I feel like you don't retain information when you're like so worried about like cutting weight and like True. depleting yourself, you know? Yeah. So you're like, it's like, yeah i mean i learned so much and he's taught me a lot and he's kind of given me the recipes worked with a lot of like high level guys like uh dolce mike dolce okay he's like a a diet coach for like uh a lot of ufc fighters crazy um and yeah and the cool thing with the ufc and him him fighting for the ufc is like they want you to be like at optimal performance right Mm -hmm. like because that that way you put on the most exciting fights right like if you go into a fight you're like depleted or injured or like not really focus on like and you're more focused on like making weight rather than training it kind of sucks and like fighters they don't have the resources that the ufc has right so they they bring in a lot of like high level like dietitians and and people that can help you help you make weight right True. And, and there there's such a science behind it and yeah and like i i mean i don't cut much out i eat smaller i would say smaller portions but um and like nutrient dense food okay. like I'll, I'll have like nothing like like no i'll have chocolate here and there like that's my like guilty pleasure like, yeah but uh is it dark chocolate milk chocolate what's your favorite white chocolate white, white chocolate's my favorite okay, yeah nice, like I, I, hella I, afghan yeah yeah <laughs> um, can, oh, white yeah. chocolate white chocolate's my shit uh-huh. but um yeah i'll have i'll still have some of that here and there but um it's just like the more nutrient dense food that you have like the better right mm-hmm. so I, I try to like have like one cheat meal every like four days okay to like kind of get the craving mm-hmm. out and what's then, what's your like go-to cheat meal 
Uh, I usually hover between three things, like either, either like burger, fries, yep, pizza, mm-hmm. or um, pasta. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Those are yeah. good. Those are good. Good shit, right? Everyone listening, they're like, that's what we do every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else is yeah. there? Like, I get so excited, man. Like, I'll, like, have a pasta, which will, like, if I'm not in fight camp, like, it'll take me, like, five minutes to eat. But, yeah. like, when I'm, like, in fight camp, it'll take, like, me 40 minutes to eat. Because mm. I, like, enjoy every bite. Nice. I'm, like, I'm not going to get this for another What's 40. your favorite pasta place? Have you gone to any place locally? Uh, I went, I just went to El Camino in Whistler. Okay. Oh, bro. Like, they make, like, fresh pasta. So, it's, mm-hmm. like, um, yeah, it's not hard. And, like, yeah, yeah. They, I, I know the process. Yeah, you know the process, eh? Like, I've seen it. Like, I don't, I don't I'm not the cook. I'm yeah. not that guy. Yeah. Do you cook, by the way? I do cook, yeah. Okay, I, nice. I was a cook at like montana's and oh shit bro before like i mean while i was training i was cooking of course the grind the you grind gotta do right? it, yeah you gotta yeah I'm so cooking. you can like cook your you so you now prepare the meals you need yeah like i don't have a, a meal prep company that i work with like i try to mm-hmm. but i just feel like like man like i would eat stuff and like the potatoes wouldn't be cooked or like that's why yeah or like the the salad would be like mushy or like you know yeah. what i mean i'm like fuck like, i could do this all myself why sure. do i need to like get someone else to make it like it's obviously convenient mm-hmm. but i figured out a way where i'm like making my meals for like three four days and then Dope. and then i'm good yeah just Crazy. like portioning out you know mm-hmm. yeah so so el camino is the place in yeah Whistler. yeah yeah in Whistler, yeah they have really good pasta because they make mm-hmm. it fresh and i like white sauce pasta yeah white like, that's sauce my zia, you know yeah, yeah, like that's, alfredo that's or something you know? alfredo's fire yeah have you tried anton's do you know anton's i do know anton's what's they- your thoughts on it They've been declining. Oh, word. In, in the recent, no. in my opinion, like when I first went there, yeah. like it was like fire, bro. Like mm-hmm. I was like, this is like amazing. But then, like I started trying places like Sinsin downtown. Like okay. if you're and your wife ever want to go, uh, yeah. like, so on a date night, I'll like, check it out. Sinsin? Sinsin downtown, nice, amazing pasta. Got it. Yeah, but yeah, I, Anton's like I don't know. Oh, Anton's still so good, man. Yeah. I've, okay, I haven't had Anton's in a long time. Yeah, it's like COVID and shit, right? Yeah. But um, my last my last couple experiences were yeah. always positive. But I get the same shit. Yeah, you know, I get the penne, which is Fredo Alf- uh, Fredo yeah um, uh, uh, Alfredo Al- sauce Alfredo yeah I, I think uh, and I get a chicken and mushrooms mm. with it. So mm. so far they haven't let me down. No okay yeah yeah. So, but I consistent? haven't tried other shit. Yeah. So maybe their other shit's whack. Yeah. I'm not really a red sauce fan though. No eh. Mm-hmm. No. I was saying it was it's pretty consistent every time you go right. It's been consistent. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. been consistent. Interesting. You know? I'm not too picky when it comes to food either. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you were talking like by the way I fast like all the time so I do oh. intermittent fasting. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just like um like me and my brother we're always fasting like yeah. that's just our like I I haven't really eaten your today. brother crescent huh crescent crescent yeah oh, the man nice. His music's killer bro oh, sick. yeah shout out to him too man yeah shout out crescent. I just yeah I just like uh i would say like last year or two two years ago maybe i like follow him on social media and he posted yeah. some track and i'm like holy fuck this yeah. is fire bro for an bro. afghan like mm-hmm. he's so lyrical man definitely nice very, man you listen to lyrics yeah That's man shit. he's very lyrical and it's like i love that shit it's like dre or yeah. uh drake not yep. dre, uh drake uh, <laughs> i love him because he's so lyrical he has those like punch lines and the, exactly the, you know and shit that just is so raw right, Facts, right? Facts. So, yeah that's most really of cool. the time like bro like crescent uh, like people don't know but he actually freestyles like people, that's like, crazy so like we'll be here yeah uh ryan uh, yeah. and cole we're all just hanging and like ryan will be like i'm gonna I'm play a beat yeah and then he's we're just listening to it and we're all just sitting and then he just starts freestyling Spinning. about shit yeah but like he listens to your conversation and yeah. he'll just say some shit based on the conversation. So yeah. you know it's like he didn't like just uh, write this and now he's performing now he's it. Saying, yeah. So that that was the, like, but he's been like this since he was a kid. Yeah. He's always good at freestyling. That's so cool, man. Cause yeah. like, man, like when I was a kid, I'd like try to freestyle, right? Like nice. as, you know, as a kid. Like, of course. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, holy, it's like, People don't know how hard it is. Yeah. Like, it's like you're thinking on the fly. There we go. You it's like fighting. I mean? fighting. You gotta yeah, not think. You yeah. gotta just do it. Just do it, right? Okay. And like, what? Did they say like Eminem, like he like knows the dictionary or would read yeah, the dictionary? Yeah, he would read the dictionary. Right? Over, he would read the dictionary and a rhyming dictionary. Yeah. Just so like, he and uh, he has a piece of paper. Uh, he calls it stacking ammo. That's yeah. his strategy. Yeah. Where he finds like a, something and be like, uh, window, bindo, findo. Like, uh, he just writes rhymes. Yeah. And then it's a piece of paper. And then when it's time to make a song, he just goes to them like okay i got wow. my rhymes yeah now i'm gonna like try to fit it in the song that's so cool man so yeah everything has a process there's a science Such to everything, a process man. man yeah but i'm glad you listened to crescent man yeah. i think that one of the songs that 
um, if you want something hard for the gym, mm. um, you would fuck with everybody knows. I don't know if you is that, that the most song. recent one. No, it's not most recent. Uh, well, he's uh, well, well, most he dropped uh, Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai, that was yeah. a sick one. You fuck with that yeah, one. Yeah, nice. that one was a sick one. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. And he's on Spotify too, right? Yeah, he's yeah, on Spotify. Yeah. He's he gets good, look. bro. That's a sick thing. Like people don't recognize the things that we're doing on an Afghan level yeah. because like spotify has been like supporting on um editorials and putting up on like editorials are like playlists mm. so like um that's how you kind of get um looks in the industry back then it was like i was posted on this blog which he's been posted by like the source magazine mm. complex magazine so, sick. so and like it's all as a but they're not looking at him as like oh afghan this they're looking as a canadian artist right and they're com com uh, comparing him to another canadian artist right um and of course we get we've been getting a lot of love from afghanistan yeah and they're all supporting but like it's still one of those things where uh, a lot of Afghan people were looking at it like, mm, what is this? You know, yeah. it's like, why are you guys doing this? But like non-Afghans are yeah. listening to our music. I mean, you're Afghan, you're yeah. listening to us, yeah. so thank you. Yeah, yeah, but like absolutely. a lot of people are listening to our shit and be like, bro, your music, your bars are crazy. Yeah. Like he went to, okay, here's the, one of the first things. Like we, you know how you're working really hard? You mm. don't know if you're good until you get kind of like, somebody you respect to say something yeah. and then they give you that positive feedback right like um 20 i think 17 2018 or um ken lewis yeah. uh, i didn't know who he was right. um i just like seen like i didn't know who he was personally mm. but uh he um i was studying about audio engineers around this time yeah and then i found out he was the audio engineer who did like all of kanye's songs wow. he did 50 cents like hits drake's hits lil wayne's like he would um mix the audio yeah and he would produce the beats wow. so like crazy and this guy's like all the like bigger the albums that i like the lyrical yeah. stuff and everything and then um i think he was just like uh one time s said something on his social media like send me music i'm trying to get inspired or whatever yeah and then i think he had like 300 people s send him an email within a couple hours some wow. shit like that because like he's kind of popping right yeah, in course. that community yeah, 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 yeah uh crescent was one of them and he had a demo and he just sent it and the guy's like yo i got so many submissions but this is the best song i heard wow and then he's like send me more and he's like bro i love your music wow and then we uh, crescent like flew to uh, New Jersey, yeah, yeah, and like uh, met him uh, face to face. I th I think they thought the session was gonna be like a t high and by, like yeah. just whatever. Meeting but him. then when he met him and he saw like Crescent was freestyling and rapping, and he's like, "Bro, you're like one of the best rappers I've seen ever." Wow. And this guy's like working, working with, with Kanye, Kendrick, yeah. Kanye, Cole, wow. and he's J Cole's album "Born Sinner," like all yeah. that stuff. J Cole's he, that, sick. Oh so, my, yeah. And he's the guy who's saying this. Yeah. So at a point, you're just kind of like. Uh, Cause sometimes we talked about this. There's like politics and shit. Yeah, there's a lot of things that's like whack in the industry, yeah. and you hear the negativity all the yeah, time. All the time, and you got to use it as fuel to fuel to keep going, right? Yeah. But like, it's always dope when somebody just comes with a positive energy and be like, yeah. "I've been in this industry, and guess what? I think you're dope." Yeah, you exactly. Know? That kind of like catapults your like not not saying that you wouldn't be confident but mm -hmm. it's just like yeah like i'm doing something right yeah like you know what i mean and for exactly. like kanye is like one of my favorite rappers right Facts, like bro. artist i guess rapper, rapper producer, producer bro producer, like yeah. he, director like he's like yeah because he's so creative right yeah Super Facts, creative. Bro. The, guy, right. the guy's a genius you yeah. know like all his music like kanye there's a point where every single kanye song he dropped i would bump it, bump it. i'm just listening yeah. to it now i think i do i do the same thing but now i also do it to drake mm. i think drake it's like i like j cole a lot um these it's like j cole kendrick all these other artists i like them a lot yeah like kendrick hasn't dropped something in a while um drake is very consistent, consistent and like yeah. you hear us you know it's a hit when yeah. drake drops something, something you know yeah and yeah. he's but he takes his time you know yeah. he like really perfects his shit it's time for coffee tunes this is a song that the coffee and banana team believes you should be listening to this season's coffee tune is hashtag free afghanistan by vancouver's very own crescent produced by east boulevard's marlo here's a quick sample of the song afghanistan trying to take over the people and occupy their land though we weren't equipped we the last ones to quit fighting back to 89 when the soviet split now hold up, hold up. Why is that relevant? Cause the Pakistani closet is full of Afghan skeletons The Muslims nowadays are focused more on what has gelatin When it comes to support, they become a little hesitant Blame it on the president or a lack of evidence As they see us bleed, we hear them read, we'll be heaven sent It's a facade to dedicate yourself to God but not help the world Here's a little background about the song Afghanistan is currently facing a humanitarian crisis On August 15, 2021, Taliban fighters entered Kabul, the capital Which led to the fleeing of the president Ashraf Ghani and the government to collapse. 
To find out more about how you can help Afghanistan, please check the show notes of this podcast. Thank you very much. And now we're back to Coffee and Banana. Mm. Uh, I was just curious, like, was there a moment that you met someone in the industry that was just kind of like, bro, you're a sick fighter or like, I like this about you, like something positive mm. that you were like, thanks, man. That shit's dope. Have you had those moments? Yeah. Like I went to, um, well, first when I started training with Cajun, like he mm. was, um, he really believed in me. That's crazy. Uh, so that was, that was really big because I've never before Cajun, like I've never trained with anybody that was at the UFC. What's town. Cajun's last name? Johnson. Cajun Johnson. So shout yeah. out Cajun Johnson. Cajun, yeah. if you're watching this, my man, what's yeah. good? Yeah. You know, uh, I've hit him up multiple listening. times to be like, bro, like, uh, I want to fight with him. I want to train. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I've been flaking out. Cause like around the same time I hit him up, COVID fucking happened. Oh, right. So then I was like too scared. Too yeah. Much yeah. Of a bitch. Too but much anyways, hit. continue. Yeah. So Cajun was like one of the guys that believed you early. Yeah. Like early on and like believed that like, and, and he was in the UFC. So I'm like, and before when I was watching the UFC, these guys looked like like so good you know yes. what i mean and i'm like okay like these get like I, I can achieve it but like they just look so crisp and like when i'm in the gym i'm like why don't i look like that like mm -hmm. you know so i was like um really hard on myself in that sense right like yep. i would want to like perfect everything to like just look flawless right yep. and so he like he was the, one of the early ones and then i went to montreal mm -hmm. um got to train with like uh, faraz zahabi who's the head coach of like uh, uh george st pierre crazy um rory mcdonald Whoa. um yeah, a lot of a lot of high talent guys. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people just go through there just to learn from him too. Mm -hmm. right? So I I got to work with him and he he was giving me some attention, which was nice. Yeah. And then uh, you know, as soon as I got to like spar all these UFC guys and high level guys, I was like, like mind you, at the time too, like when the first time I went out there, they were like whooping my ass. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you know what? Like I can do this. Like they're not as good as like they're great, but I'm not at, like. They're great, but I'm not as bad as I thought I was. Okay. If that makes sense. That you makes know, a lot you, of sense. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I You're not always... too far off the mark exactly. from where they are. Exactly, I see, right? I see. So, and, and ever since that happened and it clicked, it was just like everything else just kind of fell into place. I was I like, see. yeah. So that was kind of my crescent moment with that situation, you know? <laughs> oh, but, yeah. and even then, like, bro, like 2016 or something, we had a song that went viral. Like, yeah. Um, it was one of the top songs in Australia. Yeah. Like, oh, fucking, wow. like, we had a, a million in the stream. Um, it wasn't the case. It, it grew, uh, blew up in the Korean uh, Interesting. Um, community because mm. uh, we sampled a Korean song. So it's like a Korean uh, instrumental yeah. that was like remixed. Yeah. And then he just rapped his bars on it. But uh, the original song was just Korean. So mm. Crescent did the English version. Interesting. And they were like, oh shit, this is this fucking is lit. Yeah, yeah. And the song just went off. Yeah. You know? And then, uh, but that that was also good like this yeah. is great to like of course uh hit that market something. right it's yeah. so far away too it's great australia right? yeah. well it's australia but then los angeles too so yeah, los yeah. angeles was yeah. uh doing really well but not as much as vancouver yeah you know vancouver yeah. it wasn't popping like that mm. but they eventually t eventually got there got there yeah. which is like bro last year like i mentioned like bro like apple music amazon they all reached out to us directly and be like That's yo what's sick. good yeah and like uh, we fuck with questions music like yeah. this is crazy and then we're all independent like mm. we're not like with a label like yeah. this is all us that's crazy you know and just doing it all ourselves wow mm -hmm. even like all the video stuff you guys Bro, all of it wow everything man that's like, super yeah, sick we do it yeah we have like wow. a solid like team that we work with like everyone here that you're looking at yeah there's, there's more that extends yeah. beyond us yeah but like uh, yeah it's pretty much like we're in here we're doing our thing music uh, take the video yeah you know I'll show you some cool stuff unreleased please. after this yeah yeah I feel like you, you'd fuck with it. You yeah, know? please do. Because, yeah, music is something that's close to my heart for mm -hmm. sure, man. Yeah. Shout out Crescent, man. He's fucking killing it. Bro, yeah. shout out Crescent and shout out you. Like, yeah. people like that are just like, it's like the Mavericks or the people that are kind of like the Rebels, yeah. which it sounds like rebellious, but in our community, it is. Like, yeah. if you go anywhere out of the norm of what they expect, yeah. all of a sudden, do you get that LeChak term? Have you got that term? Do you know what uh, LeChuck means? Yeah, I have gotten it, but like, okay. I mean, how would you translate that? Uh, I translate it to ratchet. Ratchet, okay. I say yeah, yeah, ratchet is probably yeah, the closest yeah, yeah. equivalent. Yeah. And it just means like, it's like a bad path that you're going to. Yeah, it's like yeah. you're in that community. Yeah. And like the stigma behind that is like, don't mess with those kids. Mm. And like, what's crazy is like, me and you are having conversations. Mm. Like, bro, if you are the type of person that, uh, talks about meditation, self-improvement, talks about discipline, is so dedicated to their craft that constantly they're training and going so hard. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm a parent and I'm objectively looking at this. I'm yeah. like, 
I want my son to meet a person like that to yeah. be inspired right. because maybe he doesn't want to be a fighter, but if he wants to be, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, a coder, ma- yeah. uh, some mathematician, whatever, yeah. he learns a dedication from you yeah. because like you're dedicated to what your passion is. Yeah. And that's inspiring. Exactly. If somebody else is not, if someone's inspired into fighting, crazy that's yeah. fight yeah. that's fire but like even if they're not they can still get so much out of that mm. because you're doing something that one is not the norm yeah and one that's not really accepted by the community right that you're identifying right. to support exactly you're like this is the i'm, I'm repping you even though you don't fuck with me yeah. right now yeah. but um <laughs> and then you go you know that they will yeah. and uh then it's it's going to be one of those things where maybe people around your age group will never see it or yeah. our age group, yeah. but the new generation, well, they're, they're going to, cause like, uh, they're born here most yeah. of the time yeah, and yeah. they're going to be sick of, wow, I don't see Afghan anything anywhere. Yeah. You know, do I don't, do you know an Afghan person in the media, by the way, I'm like, think about someone who's out there, like really pop it. Yeah. Like I would say, uh, do you know the artist Bali? Oh my God, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, SMH. Yeah. Okay. But ask that yeah. to a non-afghan they're okay. gonna be like okay vali is sick yeah. persian people know vali yeah because he works with avang music yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay. uh, that's why he has that persian accent too he's you know yeah, yeah um yeah he's dope he the only reason out. i know him is because like my cousin played the tabla once okay. for him i see yeah not that i like i don't i personally no, don't really he's like, actually not bad like he's I, okay. I actually i like i like I he sold the soul a little bit a word i think so like i feel like in a way like again just led by money sure right I, that, that's the way i view it right? i see yeah and like i mean like i actually didn't even know for the longest time that like people were telling me that he's persian mm. like that's how much he reps like the iranian community right like, that, yeah. like which isn't bad mm. like rep but i mean i don't know like he's, you're afghan bro he's <laughs> going where the money is probably exactly, like you said exactly so we can't i can't even hate i'm like uh, no, you can't, hate. You can't yeah, see yeah. like they're a, a community supporting you more yeah. so it makes sense that you go that mm. route mm-hmm. um but yeah, like, but okay, who's an Afghan that you say? I, I got somebody in mind. Okay. Uh, uh, do you know Mo Shalizi? No. So Mo Shalizi is the manager. He used to be the manager of Roddy Rich. You know Roddy oh, Rich? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Marshmallow. He's the current manager oh, wow. of Marshmallow. Wow. Uh, he's a manager of this artist named Moray. Like, and he's Afghan. Yeah. He's an Afghan dude. Came from like, uh, uh, like humble beginnings. Yeah, yeah. And I went to like this Afghan conference in the States and he did a speech and he t- talked about his whole story and it was mm. very inspiring. Mm. And he talked about like, that he didn't really rock with Afghans like that and he just did his own thing. And now he became one of the biggest, uh, like one of the biggest influencers in the electronic community first, but now he's like one of the biggest like music entities as far as like, bro, he, uh, Marshmallow is the biggest DJ. There's yeah. no DJ bigger yeah, than Marshmallow. Right now, and yeah. that's his, his manager's an Afghan guy. Yeah. And he's the guy who thought of the idea mm. of making Marshmallow. Like he created that whole thing. No way. Yes. That whole hat That thing. whole everything. Wow, yes. that whole persona. And, uh, originally marshmallow was not even feeling that idea he's like i don't know if i feel that wow. but he's like bro your music is very mellow why don't yeah. we call it marshmallow wow and the guy's like i don't know man yeah. but he's like trust me i got yeah. something yeah and now he's like selling actual marshmallows yeah. in walmart and like he's building into a bigger Killing business it. wow you know so that guy i bro that guy is goat yeah he didn't listen to any yeah. other people yeah so that's like i hear stories like that i'm like bro that's Inspiring, good we got yeah. we got the guy yeah we got, we got, we got one we got one yeah we got so one. um and he did but uh one thing i look at it from my perspective i'm like fuck because when we go to new york and la and shit there's so much more opportunity mm. for the type of industry that we're in yeah versus being kids from coquitlam yeah to be honest yeah like there's not like you, you you need like-minded people yeah to, from the craft that you're doing yeah like even if like there's not really a music scene in vancouver just mm. like not even an afghan music scene, like yeah. a music scene. yeah it's starting to develop now but yeah. it wasn't the case mm. i don't even know if there's a fighting scene in vancouver is yeah. there a fighting scene yeah i mean uh it's growing for sure but there wasn't yeah it wasn't really like i mean like it, it, it would just be like fighters locally fighting each other like it would never be like that big but then yeah in the most recent times there's like four or five fighters that made it to the ufc from vancouver right oh so, shit so, yeah it's it's growing for sure mm-hmm. i wouldn't say vancouver like bc like BC. there's Kelowna and mm-hmm. different different um places but um yeah it's growing for sure but it wasn't before i don't think i yeah. see i see yeah. so like afghan guys popping wise we got that one guy yeah and then i'm sure there's others yeah you know by the way in germany there's a lot of afghan rappers yeah. that are like millions of followers and all this shit no way but they're not like repping afghanistan like that they're uh-huh. just like a german artist, artist you know interesting and i was like oh crazy but they exist so yeah. uh 
I, I, inshallah, you can yeah. be the fighter yeah. for our community. That yeah. we can just be like, bro, Ali Bumbaye. Yeah, we'll be cool, man. We'll mm-hmm. be cool, you know? I would, uh, yeah, I mean, with, with, like you said, man, like it's with, with, with fighting, like everything that I've learned, the mm-hmm. person that I became today through fighting, mm-hmm. like those lessons, like those are like priceless lessons, you know what I mean? Those are lessons that I could take to my grave, you know what I mean? Facts. Like for my kids and future generations and things like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, a lot of people like look at like, for instance, like, oh, like if I don't make it to the UFC or if I don't make it to this, like that was my mentality before. Mm-hmm. Like it was like so driven on like winning, mm-hmm. which is obviously it still is that. But, sure. but now I look at it as like, I'm going to, I'm going to do me the way I want to do me and the way I'm going to fight the way I want to fight. Exactly. And, and, and yeah, if I lose then, then mm-hmm. it's like, I know, but if I like try to do something that like, isn't me. And I lose and I'm like, fuck, like, why did I do that? That's not even like me, you know yeah. what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah, so like to, to, to that point, like I, I feel like, man, I hope the Afghan community starts waking up and starts supporting your people. Man. Facts. Well, they will eventually, but yeah. as long as you, per, like like you said, you're training, like like you're not like, I'm trying to be the best Afghan fighter. You're just like, yeah. I'm trying to be the best fighter. Yeah. As long as you're just trying to be like, bring me the biggest dude or whatever, yeah. I'm a fucking murder this yeah, dude. Yeah. As long as you continue to have that level of focus, You'll be good because Afghans, the fans and shit like that, they'll come, but that's like a byproduct. Yeah. Uh, what you're going for is success and greatness. Mm. If you chase those things, the other shit will always come. Yeah. But if you chase that byproduct, eventually you'll lose uh, the focus that you need yeah. to be in that. Because once you get that shit, then you're like, I'm not as motivated anymore. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Look at Conor McGregor, man. Like he's just taking a bunch of L's right now because yeah. he's achieved what he wanted to yep. achieve. Now he got, he's like, what's his motivation? He got the bag. He got the bag. He probably has like a couple more fights or do you think he even has more fights in him? They just announced actually today or yesterday that he's fighting uh, Dustin Poirier again mm-hmm. for the third time. So mm-hmm. at this point, I think it's just all about money for him. Yeah, like he's just making more bags and bags and bags. Yeah, like he's just so set for life. He doesn't mm-hmm. even need to win anymore. He's like, I, I gotta be this entertaining. I mean, like, yeah. this is me talking about, like, Conor McGregor could kick my ass, but at the same time, like, I see his marketing strategy. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna fucking be the loudest guy in the fucking room, right. and then eventually, uh, people are gonna recognize that uh, they're, they're gonna want that character. Yeah. Oh, I like that guy. You roast people. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Not very many people wanna play the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to play the good guy. They do. Right? But you need a bad guy mm-hmm. to to make a fight pop like definitely you know like one of my most exciting fights was my uh third um pro fight was this guy who was just talking so much shit yeah he was just talking shit calling me because i was supposed to fight somebody else and then my fight uh he got injured and then i ended up fighting this guy and i was like okay well they took like five six days to tell me that and yep. in that five six days i was just like eating pizza and yep. Like shit, yep. cake and everything mm-hmm. you know and uh I was like, okay, like, they're like, oh, well, we got this guy, he's down to fight you. And I was like, okay, can we do it like five pounds heavier? Yeah. Like, I, I just, you know, I was, I ballooned up. Like, sure, I, sure. you know what I mean? I like started eating a lot. So he started posting on social media, like, oh, this guy's a fat kid, like <laughs> just talking so much shit, but it sold the fight. <laughs> yeah. You know, it sold the fight. Cause I'm more of a humble person. I don't like to talk shit that much. Yeah. Like I just speak the truth and try to try to let that be the voice. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he started talking shit and it just, it made the fight pop. Everybody was excited to see Fuck. it, you know? So you do need a bad guy, I feel. Yeah, you definitely. That's Play the antagonist, antagonist protagonist? Antagonist, antagonist. antagonist. Yes, yeah. protagonist is you. Confuse me, yeah. <laughs> your story. That's it. Yeah. Or you're the antagonist of your story. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Yeah. Fuck. Um, but yeah, you were saying you fast, eh? I do fast, yeah. Yeah, like um, how, how many hours? Um, sometimes I'll, it's like 9 p.m. and I woke up and I didn't eat anything. Yeah. Uh, like I get up at like six ish. Yeah, you know that's that's my process. Yeah. Sometimes seven ish depends if I want to sleep in. Mm. This morning I slept in just because like I went ham last night yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for the most part, um, I get up early and then um, if I drink, I drink a lot of water mm. and I'll uh, drink coffee, black coffee, and then that usually keeps me throughout the day. But sometimes if I'm like if I'm hungry, I'll eat. Like I'm not like oh I have to stick to this. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's more for uh, also focus. Yeah. Because I feel like if I'm um, if I don't have food in my stomach, I'm mm. more focused in the whatever work I do. Interesting. Um, and um, like when I'm like if I'm uh, working out, I feel uh, stronger. Like mm. I feel like I can push more. Mm. But the types of workouts I do is not as intense as yours, and it's only like once per day. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I, as you, as you're talking about, like I, that's something I need to look into, and mm. that's what I, I appreciate fighters the most because I feel like you guys train 
harder than any other athlete Mm. because it's like full body movement yeah like you guys need to like like okay uh baseball players i guess now they're getting more fit but there's certain things that they got to do yeah and then that's what they got to excel at yeah um fighters it's all of your body you got to be cut your legs got to be strong your upper body yeah and i i like that level that's why i I hit up cajun i'm like bro i want to uh train with you guys because Uh, I want to cut down my body fat percentage, yep. but it all has to do with like fucking fighting. You guys, mm. bro, I went to a rumble. Do you, have you heard about rumble? It's like this thing in uh, Vancouver. It's like a punching, like you just, oh yeah, uh, rumble yeah, boxing. Rumble yeah, yeah, boxing. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I went there and it was like, uh, I think it was like a free info set. I had like, so my friend had coupons. So I'm like, okay, let me check this fucking shit it out. out. Yeah. Um, bro, I'm sweating through the end. And I'm just like, well, how the fu- how hard is this shit? I'm just yeah. punching this fucking yeah. bag. They started telling me combinations. And I'm like, I lost you. Wait, what? Wait, what's yeah. going on? A, yeah. B, and then C. I'm like, fuck, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. I felt like an idiot, yeah. but I was drenched. And I'm yeah. like, fuck, this Good is workout. hella sick. This yeah. is dope. Uh, they were a little expensive for me, so I didn't mm. continue. Mm. But um, I'd probably get back into fighting after I got better conditioning. Because I don't want to be that lame dude who's not keeping up with everybody else. Interesting. That's, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. You know, the cool thing that, um, just to go back on the fast thing that I wanted to tell you about that I actually learned Bro. recently. So you know how like, like when you gain weight, you gain weight in the hips and mm-hmm. like the legs, like girls, like their butts and yeah, like, yeah. you know, so actually what the body does, and this is, I don't know if it's true. This is just what I, I heard on, I don't know what I was listening to, but anyways. Nice. Um, so your body stores stuff there so that like, say you don't get food for a long time. Mm-hmm it uses that Got right it. so that's why when people fast so this one the, the person was talking about uh they fast for a week yeah and only drink water Crazy. right that's great and man. so basically like all those areas it brings down your body fat percentage mm-hmm. like so fast definitely because it starts using like your fat from your hips your butt but it's like so cool how the human body and it's it's like it's it's in areas where you're balanced like it's you're not going to store fat in your back because then that yes. would cause you to like hunch over Facts. right you have it on your hips your butt your legs um so you're more balanced and it doesn't affect your equilibrium that's incredible bro Super do you cool. fast by the way uh after hearing that i might i might try it like i don't know fasting yeah. for a week like because i don't so know how it affects performance you know yeah. like i've never had to like perform at that elite level physically yeah exactly right like know? that's the thing like would it affect my training what like would i have to take time off training and this person said that like um when they fast, it's it's actually like, like it slows down the aging process. So it's really? like, uh, yeah. So I actually like, heard about that too. I yeah. heard about that too, that um, human beings, like, okay, we weren't used to just having food all the time. Yeah. Like we're just like spoiled. Mm. So um, around like winter time, we were supposed to like um, go into periods of just like fasting. Right. Um, and that was just like something that uh, through evolution that we've just developed to have this inside of us. And people mm. think like, no, no, I, I'm hungry, so I got to eat. Mm. But they don't understand that they can push that as much as possible. Yeah. And um, that's, I think that's one of the things that's super cool about Islam and Ramadan. Yeah. Because I was, at first when I was a kid, I, w- I wasn't really into it. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's like for yeah. adults. Yeah. Um, but then I, I remember doing a couple times, because I'm from Afghanistan. I was yeah. born there. That's I don't know if so I told cool. you that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. I was born. I came here when I was nine. Wow. So. I remember how things were. We're out there. Yeah, straight up. And um, by the way, everybody's chill. People, yeah. are, people are normal. It's not what you see on it's the media. It's not right? at yeah, all. Yeah. It's like people are chill and um, there's more modern people than yeah. it's like, oh, these fucking conservative yeah. extremists. That's yeah. all bl- bullshit. bullshit. It's, there's, it's there. It's but there. But more countryside, yeah. you get yeah. to the other side. Yeah. You kind of know, you know. Yeah. Just uh, you're in Vancouver. Go more in other areas. You're yeah. going to find some weird ass people. No, yeah. no comments no. specifically. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Where was I going with this whole Afghan thing? Uh, but when I saw uh, Ramadan is just like a normal thing that yeah. occurs there, I'm like, let me try it. So 2013 is when I actually was like, let me get into fasting. Yeah. Um, I I prepped. So what I did is I cut down my meals by 95. percent So wow. whatever I would eat, I would only eat like five percent of it. Wow. Um, and I was, by the way, I was I was also fat that time. Mm. So I uh, like right now I weight 165, 64. So that's not gonna balance weight. Yeah. My height is 11, uh, five eleven and a half. Interesting. But you know, six on Tinder. Yeah, six. I don't, <laughs> 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 gotta build it on Tinder. I don't have Tinder. My yeah. wife watching. Uh, yeah. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I never got into Tinder. Oh really? Either. Yeah. I mean, a dating you missed that. Date. Yeah, you missed that. that. You missed that. Yeah. Phase. But the reason I bring that up is like I was like over two hundred pounds. Yeah. Um, during college, because I'm just eating. I'm just 
just not taking care of myself. Yeah. And then um, I tried working out, but it wasn't enough. Mm. Then I found out about fasting and everything. I learned about like Buddhism, the different religions, and like they all have fasting. All why do all religions have this? So I'm like, let me try it. So I cut down my meals, and then I started losing a lot of weight. Then Ramadan came in the month after. Two months after, I'm down like I want to say 44 pounds plus. Wow. Yeah. So Killed it. I was like. Bro, like my body fat percentage was like less than 10%. Yeah. And I felt so good. Like yeah. it wasn't like, you know how some people like your energy is low. Nah, man, I just felt great. I've, I had so much more energy right. after the fast. During, I I was annoying. I was like angry. Mm. It's, it's tough being hungry for that long, long period of time. But then after that, then I just like now when I fast, it's just kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it now. Yeah. I, de- I deal with it. But initially you just have to. It's tough, and it's even tough, like yeah. Ramadan is coming up. Yeah. So I I don't fast all uh, like all the days. I'll do, yeah. I'll, I'll I pick and choose because your immune system gets weaker. Yeah, and especially during this time, yeah, it's yeah. tough. So um, if I'm just like 100 percent working from home and I'm not meeting a lot of people, then those days I will definitely fast. Yeah, but I, it's just like uh, the immune system. It's it's important. You it's need important, to like feed that part, especially now, especially right now. Yeah, and so. But that's that's what kind of got me into fasting, fasting and yeah. then my my brother uh, Crescent, so he's like really into it. Like he'll do water fast, yeah. where he'll just like for a week and like a couple days, just like drinking water only. Yeah, and uh, very extreme. Yeah. you know, I think that. But he can do it, and yeah. I'm just like, good for him. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the best. From what I've heard, that's the best way to do it. It's like mm-hmm. water fast for like a long period of time. Yep. So that's tough, man. Yeah, it's it's tough. I, I wouldn't be able to sleep, man. Fuck. You think at yeah. first it's tough, like yeah. it's it's very tough. Yeah. But then um I remember one day <laughs> I just drank tea the whole day. Yeah. And bro, I was up till like two AM because my body's like, go eat, go yeah. eat, go eat. And I just like like literally forced myself to sleep. Sleep. It man. was fucking it's tough, tough, man. But then you got used to it, huh? Um, it was, yeah, I got used to it. And also like if I go to a period like where I don't fast for a while and then I'm like, I'm going to fast today, that day is going to be tough, but it's a good reset button. But I also fast when there's BS. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's something else that you, you probably didn't know. So fast thing they said it, uh, it triggers brain activity. It Mm -hmm. actually has shown to grow brain cells because you're put into this like crazy state that your body's like act go bring food go yeah. so there's a lot of activity going on in your brain because your brain is like uh it's your it's your sensor system so it's telling your whole body what to do wow. so it's telling you go get food it's low-key making you smarter so that's what i uh, i read about when i was first going into this yeah. that's outside of religion or anything yeah and i was like just for that i'm curious so when mm. i started doing it i found out my focus was so much sharper that's so the, cool. the times i was fasting right and um i st- uh, i'm still bro i love food i love food so yeah, much you know, are you a food guy? Off. Bro, you're yeah. Afghan because, yeah. like, we have good food. You we know what I mean? Food. Yeah, bro. Like, do you, food, I do you want to do the fucking mantu and Oshak? Oh, Which one are you? Which one mantu, are you? For mantu, sure. yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I'm, I'm going to say why Oshak's better. Yeah, <laughs> Here yeah. You go. yeah so, Mantu is sick. Yeah. But Oshak, you can eat without the guilt. Mm. At the end of the day, it's fucking veggies. Yeah. You know? So, it's a little bit better. You know? Yeah. You're like, okay, I'm still getting some fiber out of this. There's yeah. a lot of carbs. Both has a lot of carbs. carbs yeah. This one, I feel I can flush out so I can have a little bit more. Yeah. I guess I would agree with that, but man, I could down like a tower of mine. Yeah, like, mine too is crazy. Go ham on it, yeah. Oh, okay, Loki, you want to go to an Afghan? Do you, uh, do you know any Afghan restaurants here? Yeah. Um, do you go to the Horseman? Horseman, I've gone yeah. to, yeah. You know they're my cousins, right? They are your cousins. Yeah. Interesting. Cousins. That's yeah. really cool. Wow. The owners. This yeah. is like one of the longest running restaurants in Canada. Yeah. Really and good too. So that's Tastes good. really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. And then there's an Afghan kitchen that opened in Surrey. Surrey. Did yeah. you go to that one? I've been to that one. It's yeah. good. Yeah. I like that. They're the the owner. He's a nice guy. He's he was a nice featured guy. on like, I think like the Food Network recently. Was he? Yeah, he was. Interesting. Because I do know. Uh, I forget their names now, but I uh, I do know them um, through. You know who I'm talking about? The the main guy. The main guy. There's yeah. Two brothers. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah and the mom's in I the think, kitchen. Yes, oh. I I met maybe one of the brothers. Yeah. 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 Really nice guys too. Dope um, dude, yeah. 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 And food was great. My mom's like, that's the best Afghan place. Yeah. But uh, for us, it's like, man, it's like mom. Yeah, yeah my, like my, your mom. But it's yeah. always, that's kind of like weird. Like my mom, uh, for her, it's good because now she doesn't have to do the cooking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah what I exactly, mean? yeah. So that's good. As uh, much as they hate the cooking, they they kind of love it too. Yeah, they love like doing shit yeah. for uh, people. For Bro, fun. we love me money. Yeah. We love hosting shit. Yeah, hosting. That's like a huge part of our culture. It's crazy, right? Because it's like when you go to an Afghan like party, I guess, it's mm-hmm. like you get like the food, which is like endless amount of food. Definitely. And then you get the dessert mm-hmm. and then you get the fruit. Fruits. There we go. Yeah. yeah. 
That's so. good. It's like a full fucking meal. It's like, yeah. what, what do you guys want? Yeah. That's dope. Is it all, and it all started with fasting. fasting <laughs> we, we got from fasting back to Afghans. Yeah. That's good, man. It's part of us. We yeah. can't let, let that fucking identity go. And, and we're then, keeping it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. there's going to be backlash from the community for shit that we do that mm. they haven't seen before, that mm. other Afghans. It just comes with the territory. Yeah. We're doing something new. Yeah. You have to kind of accept it. Yeah. You know, and like once they actually have a conversation with you, like, oh shit, this guy's hella disciplined and everything. More disciplined than somebody else, like your local fucking salesman. Car and salesman. Car salesman. salesman. You want, the, oh, okay, good. No disrespect at all to salespeople or no, anything. Not like at that. all. Not We're at all. We're just like talking about the Afghan dynamic. So if you don't know this story, just like chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> but <laughs> Afghans yeah. know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, it's like um, we support all those things, but yeah. um, it's something. Self discipline is the most important thing. The most important, yeah. like yeah. you, you got to be that person who can like, because you you procrastinate. Everyone does. Human yeah. nature. Human nature. But um, as a fighter, man, that's that's one of those things that you need to have number one priority. I think yeah, that's one of the hardest parts too, because it's like, as a fighter, man, like, and I'm I'm like through our culture of like hosting and stuff like that. I, I'm I'm super big on like friends and family and all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? So it's like super hard when like you miss like family gatherings to go train and you miss like friends birthdays to go train and yeah. like you know go to like dinners and then like have to leave because you got to mm -hmm. get up at you know and you, or like you go there and you only eat a salad while everybody else is chowing down pizza you know so yeah there's a lot of discipline man a lot of sacrifice a lot of sacrifice yeah oh uh, one thing i was gonna ask like yeah. uh which i wanted to ask you earlier let's say i'm a i want to get into fighting yeah in vancouver and stuff yeah. How do I, who do, what gym, do you know any gyms that you co-sign right now? Like hit those guys up, they can like train you or they can kind of get you get where you, you need started. to get. Yeah. Like, I mean, I would say like, not like, I don't want to be like professional. I yeah. mean, like just like just to, to self fight for yeah. myself. Yeah. I would highly recommend, uh, going to see Cajun, okay. uh, Cajun Johnson. Like I, I think that he doesn't just teach for people to become fighters. He teaches people to like learn how to defend yourself on the street. Got like it. which is which is super important and then um uh true north jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. uh which is where i do my grappling okay and uh they're they have like some high level guys but they just because it's two different worlds like a fight starts standing so that's mm -hmm. when you like are you can use your limbs you're kicking your, yeah, yeah you know long range stuff and then like if like someone just somehow takes you down then it's like grappling right so yes. then like what, what do you do like you know do you you never ever want to like do things like turn your back to somebody or something facts, like that you know facts. what i mean so like i would highly recommend going to see those two people like those two gyms mm -hmm. and um and yeah and that's kind of like you'll be able to defend yourself on the ground if it gets there or okay. standing with with cajun so okay so cajun is the guy to hit up yeah. and then uh true north uh jujitsu Jiu yeah cool yeah that's sick that's yeah. dope i'm i might look into it when all this mess is done, done you know yeah it's, uh, uh but yo thank you so much for coming here yeah bro. man my like, pleasure it was super fun man nice. lost track of time man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fuck straight up yeah. but at the same time do, is there anybody you want to shout out as we're kind of concluding um yeah i mean uh big shout out to west canna uh their opening their grand opening is going to be um one so uh big could, shout out to them could we like order their stuff online like, yeah their products absolutely online there's gonna be a website um it's gonna be like westcanada.ca or something Dope. they haven't built it yet but nice. um i'll probably post it on my social media follow Fire. me at ali Bumbaye. we'll put that you don't have to say oh, okay, okay. Well, we got we'll, you. We'll, you got put that in we'll put that in there <laughs> yeah. don't worry about um, that uh, other than that man like yeah tristar vancouver all my training partners um True North Jiu-Jitsu and uh, New Edge Alliance and CBDU and my management company, Mylan Management. Okay, fire, yeah. bro. That's that's incredible. Do you yeah. want to give Ra uh, Raina a shout out? Oh, yeah, Raina. She Raina. knows I love her, but and I always forget her. But she's she's like my low-key manager. You know? Okay, you nice. Know? She's, she's like, like always does the nitty-gritty stuff. That's fire, bro. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Until next time, everyone. Yeah, appreciate Peace it. and love. Thank you, everyone, for listening. A huge shout out to the Coffee and Banana team. It goes without saying, we can't get anything done without this amazing team. Video manager, Cole Westin, audio engineer extraordinaire, Ryan Lore, and our producer, Canel Verma. Not to mention our wonderful sponsors for the season, and most importantly, you for listening. Visit our website at Coffee and Banana for more information about each episode, including all the promo codes that you need. I'm your host, Kane Beer. Enjoy some Coffee and Banana on your road to greatness.